welcome to the Board of Finance meeting. It's great to see uh, so many people coming in. Thank you. All right. Call the meeting to order at 7.02. Um, I'll note that Mr. Porter is not here and not able to make it. Um, so we'll need um, Chris to be a voting member tonight. I also will note that um, Jim, the Democratic alternate, is unavailable to join tonight as well. All right, we'll start with public comment. Um, if there's a lot of public comment, we'll, I will uh, limit the amount of time people can speak, just because we'll be here all night. But. Okay. So I think I'll start. I'm Suzanne O'Connor. I'm a uh, resident of Washington Ridge Road. Um, I'm a parent of an East Granby baseball player. And um, I am here tonight because I wanted to support the Board of Education. We have been working with them, and we are of the understanding that they are going to present a proposal to all of you to approve funding to improve our baseball and softball fields. Um, I raised this issue a year ago with the Board of Education that the fields are in terrible condition from a safety and playability standpoint. Um, at that time, there was a lot of finger pointing with folks saying it's the town's responsibility and others saying it's the school's responsibility. And while there's been little clarity on that issue, um, the Board of Education has at least stepped up to begin the process. Um, we went out and walked the fields with some landscaping experts who explained to us that both the softball and baseball fields are in very difficult condition. Baseball is actually no longer compliant with some of the regulations on the field in terms of the pitcher mound height. They identified numerous safety concerns with the field. Um, as a result of that, the Board of Education put out a request for a proposal. They have received two bids to get the work done on both the baseball and softball fields. Um, they are reasonable amounts, we think, given that over the last three years we've done nothing but cut the budget on these fields for the last three years. There have been reductions in the amount of the field maintenance budget, um, and we are paying for that deferred maintenance now. Um, at this point, you know, we, we are, um, also have a parent, a parent group, the Friends of East Granby Baseball, who is willing to support this effort um, in working with the Board of Education. We offered to provide 10% of the cost of what the baseball field repairs would cost. Um, we went out and did a GoFundMe and we've had significant success. Um, we've actually exceeded our goal. So we are ready to support this effort with some private dollars to get it done. Uh, but we really need your help to get it approved sooner than later. And we would like it done with this budget cycle, um, whatever necessary to get that done, so that they can begin the work in the next couple weeks and actually get this accomplished. The boys are here to explain to you kind of what they're facing out on the baseball field. So, fellas, take it away. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is James Fagnan. I'm actually the, the president of the junior class of East Grammar High School, and I also play shortstop for the baseball team. Like she said, I'm here to support the um, the, the budget for the for the East Grammar for the baseball field repairs. Um, like she said, I play in the infield. It's in very rough shape. Balls bounce every other direction. And I mean, you got you got big kids like him. He could hit the ball 100 miles an hour, <laughs> and it's just frankly, it's dangerous. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want any of my friends to get hurt. I don't want to hurt anybody else. And like she said, we've already we've already raised a pretty substantial amount in our private funds, and we're very willing to help raise that money. So I just really want to support that movement as well. Uh, I'm Jacob Gomartin. Uh, I'm a junior at the high school, and I catch for the baseball team. And you can really see, like, around like the batting boxes, there's just holes, and like you can really see the whole field from that position. And you can just see like bumps everywhere, and it's just not really a good field to play on. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm Luke Geyer. I'm a senior at East Grady High School. I play third base, and after the last couple of years. Uh, I've taken numerous balls off the face and neck in practice because of abnormal hops due to the poor field conditions. Uh, and it's only gotten worse. I twisted my knee last year also. Uh, to go, basically, basically to go off what James said, it's unsafe. Luck, fortunately, I haven't been hit with anything hard enough to cause any serious damage. But in a game situation with hard hit balls, it could very well happen. And the chances have only increased of that happening. I'm Jackson Moore. I'm a junior at the high school. I play outfield and I'm also a pitcher. I'm also kind of known for my speed, so I've been used as a pinch runner many times before. The thing with our infield, uh, it's kind of like the Grand Canyon, running base to base. So uh, as Luke said about his knee, it's very easy to twist something as you're running from base to base. 
Uh, it's very dangerous, especially sliding. Uh, the dirt is not easy to slide on. Sometimes you hit it really hard. Sometimes when it's wet, you slide 10 extra feet. So it's kind of hard to tell. But as a outfielder too, the um, outfield is essentially a swamp at times. And sometimes you'll get a pop fly, you expect a bounce, and it just sinks into the ground. But it's very unfortunate what our field has come to, and that's why we come for your support. Thank you. I'm Kieran Beeman. I'm also a junior at the high school, and I'm primarily a pitcher for the baseball team. Um, right now, the mound's in really bad condition, and there's a lot of effort that not only the pitchers and the coaches put into fixing up the mound after games and practices, but it's gotten to the point now where that effort is just not enough to keep the mound in playable condition. And it's also the point where it's dangerous pitching with my stride and stuff. Uh, my landing foot slips a lot or it just digs into the dirt and really creates a lot of opportunity for a twisted ankle. Um, yeah, having your guys' support in this would be a great help. My name is Kyle Anthony. Uh, I play infield. And as they've said, uh, even like during practices, we've had like numerous like injuries during just practices, not even like games. Like we haven't even started the games this year. And if there's nothing done, then it would just continue to get worse as it has over the past couple of years. So we really need your help. I guess the players are done. Heather Adams, um, seven target range drive and actually the mother of one of the team players. One of the things that has to be considered is if, in fact, these fields are not playable this season, there is an increased cost that will be incurred to the Board of Education, which is the increased transportation costs of moving all of these games out of town and incurring the costs of transporting kids to other fields, making arrangements for um, referees, etc., that is not currently contemplated as part of the expenses for the baseball and softball season. Um, Furthermore, I understand that it has been the town's position that the maintenance of the fields is the responsibility of the Board of Education. However, over the past several years, the town has been the one who has been hiring the contractors and overseeing the work that's been done. So at this point, it appears to be that it is an issue for both the town and the board. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, thank you. All right, the next uh, agenda item is acceptance of the February 7th meeting minutes. I'll entertain a motion. Move to accept minutes of the February 7th, 2023 Board of Finance meeting. Second. Here's a motion, second. Any discussion? Do I need to abstain because I wrote them? Or can I vote on them? You can vote on them. Okay. <laughs> Uh, any further discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. All right, aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, additions to the agenda. Um, the I'll note that we do need one addition to the agenda for um, the, the uh, Board of Ed's capital request for the fields. Uh, that came in after the agenda was posted. So I'll entertain a motion to put that on the new business. I'll make a motion to add it under new business. Um, B, I guess, will be where it leads. Okay. Second that motion. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor of that, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Extension? Okay. Are there any other additions? Okay. All right, communication of correspondence. Um, Let's see, uh, I'll run through the, the things. Most of them I think you've, you've seen. Uh, the Board of Ed notified us of a uh, non-lapsing uh, expense they have. Um, I forget what it is, it's somewhere in here. Uh, but a $25,000 expense. Um, I had some communication with uh, Christine Gallagher, the town clerk, around the alternates. And we do have an agenda item to um, appoint them uh, for the next term that starts on the 31st. Um, and he uh, has some communication with uh, Mark, the auditor. Uh, 
and you will be, um, they have new engagement letter templates that come out every April, so if you're used to seeing the engagement and the appointment on in the March meeting, that'll be at a later date when those, when those new templates are out, so just uh, pointing that out. Is there any other uh, communication or correspondence anyone has? did get two emails to the box um, from citizens who are in support of the softball fields. Okay. Uh, two uh, the hard shared, copies? No, it was oh. a shared distribution list. Okay. I don't know if it's up to date, so I don't know if everyone got that. Thank you. I saw one today. I think that's you. Know, there's one. one. Yeah. I thought two, there was yeah. two. Yeah, there's two. One oh. today and then one yesterday. Prior yeah. Day. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody not get those? I guess particularly Chris, did you get it? Yeah, I think I've gotten everything. It just okay. got lost in all my emails. So. Okay. All right. For some reason, I didn't get them, but I'll Okay. It. Thank you for that. Yep. Okay. Um, old business. Um, the draft purchase policy updates. Um, I don't have an update now, but my expectation is that... Um, Soon, I'll circulate a copy with some edits. I know we talked about it a couple months ago, and then we'll bring it back to a meeting. I'm just going to weave it in. I know it's a busy time with the budgets, but um, I, there's only a couple edits out there. Um, and I think we've got all the input from you guys just like we can. Any other little business? All right. Um, I. Reordered. Typically, we do the monthly reports at the end, but since we are going to be hearing about next year's budget, I thought we'd do the uh, do the financials first, just to hear um, you know, any status on the, the uh, monthly financials and, and where people think they might finish off 2023 fiscal year. Um, so, if we can start with the board of selectmen and go through the current fiscal year. Sure. I um, provided the Board of Finance with summary um, department mm -hmm. and the narrative, and I'll just go over some lines which stand out. The selectman line is currently 6000 unfavorable to budget due to increased stipends, postage, and meeting supplies. We anticipate it, hopefully, we'd be back flat due to some fees on the salary line. The assessor's line, 0600, is $10,000 in favorable to previous overlap and pay. Post, uh, excuse me, assessor clerk salary market adjustment and some prepaid software. Tax collector line, 0800, is 1764 unfavorable due to seasonal, extra seasonal pay and vacation coverage hours and is beginning to trend favorable to budget. Data services, line 1300, is $6,000 in favorable. It's um, currently, it is trending more favorable to budget. Um, it is over due to multi-factor authentication upgrades required by our insurance carriers and updated hybrid equipment, which is so far working tonight. There might be some user errors, though. Um, but there are people on. I just want to let people know there are people on the meeting tonight, but because their video is not on, they're just not showing up. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, public buildings, line 1400 is unfavorable to budget. Um, there was a credit that wasn't posted yet to those financials, a $14,000 credit, which will be put back. It was a bill that was paid twice. Fire department, um, our fire administrator is going to speak to this later. The, the budget is looking more favorable now. Mm -hmm. um, they have had a... Um, spending freeze, so um, I gave you February financials, so you don't have into March, but as of February financials, they were 56,000 in favorable um, due to some outdated invoices that had been received. The fire marshal line, 2,000 is um, 2,700 in favorable due to the budget, due, excuse me, due to increased inspections and hours. Do you want to speak to where we are looking to end up? Is that what you want to hear tonight? Yes, if you have a view of where you think you're going to end up, I would welcome that. Yeah, so uh, what we do is we track a line of sight 
into uh, our fiscal year end 630. So we take our actuals and then we forecast out remaining spend. And we look at each and every department and right now we're liking what we're seeing in terms of where we're gonna end the year. And as you know, we have a contingency of 54K. And right now, um, I think that, uh, you know, the way we're trending, I think we're gonna be okay. Um, even with the fire department challenges that we've had, uh, take for instance DPW, there's some underspend going on there due to, um, you know, the mild winter we've had. And we have an, a couple of other cost centers that are also depending on it. So we got our eye on it. Again, our line of sight is 630 and we're feeling good that, uh, you know, we're gonna be fiscal year on a positive note. Do you expect to use up the, the entire $54,000 for contingency, or how close are we? I'm sorry? Uh, the 54000 contingency, how close are we to using the entire amount? Yeah, I, um, right now, Jim, I, I don't see us tapping into that. Great. Okay. Yeah, I don't see us, we're, we're trending, you know, slightly under, and he didn't say had some good discussions with the department heads in terms of, you know, keep your eye on the remaining spend, and. Um, you know, just watch how you're trending. So we've got some good communication going on. Even despite the 50, what is it, $56,000 for the fire department? Wow. That's, yeah. That's it, would, it would, I was gonna say, it'd be helpful to have an understanding of how much we're seeing for those savings in those other areas, because just doing some quick math here, Jim's point, you got 56,000 there, you got another 50, you know, 40 something thousand between the rest. That's almost twice what we have for right. contingency. So I had given you February financials and not up to mark to the date we're at now. We did have, um, we did have staff resign. So there's some okay. savings in the salary line. So one of the things we'll do um, between now and the next meeting, we'll have some email exchange mm -hmm. with questions from the board to, to you guys as well as to the board of ed. So the first question is gonna be to show us um, what the you know what the line item budget look, the one you're talking about that's going to be successfully you know below budget we want we want to see what that's going to look like yeah we could provide a forecast so we'll, we'll want because again program. we look at year to date actual remaining spend okay. and not only do we focus on cost center but we also drill into the line codes keep an eye on it we have a good dialogue with our department heads okay so. You know, what he provided you was the month, but again, we could look at year-to-date remaining spend in that forecast, you know, for the next several months, the remaining months, I should say, where we're gonna end up. And let you know the lines that are favorable. Okay, that's all, that's... Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, and the lines that are favorable. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd be looking for um, literally this, I mean, it doesn't have to be this format, but this report that you sent, it's every line item and what you think that projected amount is at the end of the year. That would be yeah. the most yeah. helpful. Yeah. No problem. Right, cool. So i got a quick question. You've got a comment in the bottom 118000 Is that encapsulating where in here? Or is that just a placeholder resident trooper? Oh, um, we are, yeah, so we're, we are billed that at the end of the year for the resident trooper. So that is a spend we'll have. So that's not that's not captured within. No, it's not showing up in the year of debt actual. In mm -hmm. that report, we don't show any open commits because the system won't allow us to do so. Yeah. So what okay. we do is each and every month we look at what our big open commits are, and then we add that in in terms of where we're going to end the year. Mm -hmm. So just never having seen it presented this way, is that should we add that to expense at this point and deduct it? Hasn't it hasn't been expensed yet. In June. Contingent. Oh, okay. Those are actuals. So okay. that's when the contract's true. So you're just giving us a heads up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it all comes in at once at the end of the year. So we have to just show that. We have to add that in. Got it. Thank you. I, I had a question about that. So that amount is sitting on a line item in here already. I guess. Yep. Yep. Not on your, not on what not you Not on the report showed. we yeah, have. Yeah, in the actual budget, yeah. It's in our forecast. Yeah. Okay. It's accounted for. Gotcha. Okay. Other questions for the, um, for the second? Okay. 
Um, we'll go to the board of ed, then we'll do the treasury reports. Ink got needle tonight, Jeff. Got <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the back corner here. Yeah. Um, hopefully you received it, and I do apologize. I sent it off late with the snow and everything else, and just the week we've had. Uh, I hope we, you've all received my financials that the board approved Monday evening. Um, I'm going to go through the important stuff here. The LED lighting program is completed. We've been signed off. Uh, so I'm going to say within the next, not this coming month, but the, uh, I'm going to say May, we'll, we'll start putting the, sending over the, uh, the usage uh, grid that we're, we're putting together. That way you'll see the usage in Seymour and here. It should net out this, uh, some projected savings along the line. Um, HVAC units, we still have not heard from the state. I've heard that uh, the message I received is they're all done with it, and it's sitting at the, uh, the commissioner's hands at this point. So, but no, yes, no, no, or not even a maybe at this point. Uh, the transportation services, we've, um, we've the board has approved us to move into negotiations with uh, M and J, our current uh, contractor. Uh, the Munis database has been moved from June 19th to June 30th into our train database, and July 3rd is the actual go live. We're also, we have a meeting scheduled next week with Kelly to uh, see if we can uh, walk through some of the chart of accounts so that we can work with the town and see if their setup could be similar to ours when we, when we create the entity within Munis itself. So, uh, if so, then when in I believe it's late April, early May. We'll be copying the database over for Kelly's group to uh, really get busy. <laughs> Lack of better terms. Uh, budget process, as you know, we came, the board has approved, has endorsed a 3.99 expenditure uh, rating. And um, the 25000 that we asked for, uh, we're, we're waiting for the, uh, we just received uh, quote to do some asbestos review to make sure we break in before we break in anything. We have to, have to do an asbestos walkthrough. And uh, I did give the, the Board of Finance some copies of the two RFPs that we've received so that you're aware of uh, what we're doing with the fields. The budget itself is at about 95% expended, as you see. And um, we're still watching everything very closely at the bottom of the budget. I'm, in bold are some of the things that uh, we look at in terms of overages and as to why, what, when, and where, and what's going on. So, is there any questions? I'll be more than happy to entertain you. So you have two line items in here that are pretty deep, uh, the private and public school tuition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are the big uh, mm -hmm. deficits at this point. Is there any, is there any, like, Light at the end of the year, do you expect any? We've any? increased next year's budget. That's one of the areas we've increased to help cover. Okay. Uh, but it's also one of the areas that we've been discussing to see if we can bring some of these programs back in house. Um, we've been quite successful with the one program we have now. Uh, there's uh, eight students that we've brought back, and you'll see that coming up uh, on the. On the uh, that's great going forward, but I'm more concerned with this year. Is there any hope that you'll get additional, uh, any additional money from the state to cover this when you At build for it? No? Unless I go into a complete deficit, I don't. Okay. Um, and you don't want me to do that. So I, I just, I know we do the billables at the end of the year for it, but there's no additional funds that would come back to the town based on this? Not. 100% we do have some billables we bring back in to help offset some of these right. with some of the choice students. I that much I will say. I just had to ask, those are the two by far glaring yeah. <laughs> deficits. I think it's important to remember when we budget, we budget actual, so we budget for what we know. So right. any old bridge would represent any changes in student placements throughout the year if we budget spending. Thank you. Yeah. And the, the unfavorable, based on legal fees, is that due to the uh, teachers' negotiation? Both negotiations. Both negotiations, yeah. And, and student support services. We've had some oh, requirements there as well. Okay. We use the same term. The, um, in the summary memo, the second to last item uh, what school is that? I, I see room numbers, but the one with the leaks? 
Yes, that's all growth. That's all growth. Yep. All right. Any other questions for you? All right. Thank you. Kelly, we got two months of treasury reports. Um, I think report on February. So but um, very quiet month. We got some of the special ed revenue in. Interest continues to be very favorable to budget as does the building permit revenue. Um, and that's kind of it for updates. Everything else pretty quiet. Any questions? Okay. All right, thank you. Capital Policy Committee. Do you want to make a motion to oh, accept yeah, I guess we do. Yeah. Well, we could do them all together, I guess. Sure. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the financials as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? <clears throat> Thanks to Oliver, the motion <laughs> Um Capital Policy Committee, I'm not aware that that policy committee is active. I'll go for it off the agenda for that All right, new business. We have alternate appointments. Um, we can do one because Chris is here and then uh, Jim will have to uh, show up at uh, Christine's office. You can appoint him. Hmm? No, that's beer. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, you just can't swear him in. You can't swear him in. Okay, <laughs> that's right. Okay. Unless he's on. <laughs> All right, so I have um, received from Todd, um, and so I know we recently appointed Chris, but the term actually ends March 31st, so this will be for the next three-year term through March 31st of 26. So from Todd, I received a uh, uh, request to reappoint Chris, and from Mike, I received a request to reappoint Jim. So I guess we can take a motion. Do you want to do them separately? Uh, sure. Right? Or yeah, we'll do them separately. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to nominate Chris as an alternate. Second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Is there a motion for? Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, nominate Jim McPherson to be the alternate, Democratic alternate. I can second that. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Motion carries. Thanks. <coughs> and uh, you'll be able to do the uh, swearing in after. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's currently a member sworn in, so. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. yeah. Illegal at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to be the shortest term. term. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. We could have waited. We could have waited a meeting. And yeah. All right. Um, so the next item, I just I want to review the timeline we have. Um, so I like to think ahead. So we're going to talk, and this is the timeline with respect to the annual budget. So we're going to talk tonight. We're not going to vote on anything as a Board of Finance. On April 4th at our meeting, we are going to vote on what to um, send to the public hearing. That'll be on April 18th. In between then, I expect we'll have some questions that we'll, we'll have one uh, board member designated to reach out to the Board of Selectmen with those questions. It'll be by email and one for the Board of Education. Um, and we're going to want, and one of the things I want to work through tonight, we're going to want those answers back in enough time to digest them before the April 4th meeting, which will probably be like that Friday prior, if we're, if we're going to meet on April 4th, which means we got to get the questions over to you guys in enough time to get them back to us. Um, so, uh, so think about that. Like, you know, next Friday is the 24th. That would give everybody two weeks. I'm hoping that's sufficient. I, I'll. I'll give you guys a minute to confer and nod or tell me that that's not going to work. 
Well, I, I can say right off the bat it's going to depend on the questions. If there's 30 okay. something questions with multi okay. parts, that's going to no, take no. us okay. a while to gather all the data. Okay. But we're happy to do what we can as we've always okay. met your deadlines okay. in the past. Okay. All right. And perhaps you can look at the last couple of years' questions and answers because some of them might have already been answered to some degree. Okay. That would be Fair enough. helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, the other, does that timeline sound reasonable to you guys as well? And maybe we can ratchet it back a day or something. Two weeks is enough time. To I'll try questions. to get us to get, maybe we can get the questions out even a couple of days sooner. Okay. Cool. Um, the other, the other thing to point out is the, um, I walked through with Nicole kind of the timing of our next meeting on the 4th and getting stuff printed to be available in people's mailbox on, and this would be that, this would be the all town mailing of Let's Talk Turkey that would be in their mailbox by, on Saturday the 15th. We have Easter in between, uh, we have Good Friday holiday, excuse me. So we're meeting on Tuesday the 4th. Good Friday is Friday the 7th. So we need to have stuff like on Wednesday the 5th or Thursday the 6th. And I, so, I mean, I think that's great if what we come out of the April 4th meeting is exactly what goes in. Typically we don't change too much, but we're gonna, we're gonna have a time crunch there. So I, I just wanna point it out, I don't know what you guys normally go through once we have that meeting. Is it a couple days? Is it doable in a day or two? Um, for the typical materials. I'm sorry, Jeff, are you talking about the Let's Talk Turkey publication? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna meet on the fourth and say this is the this is what we want to go to the to the public hearing. Right? It could be exactly what we hear tonight, it could be a little different, I don't know. We right. talked about it. We'll have enough time to get it to talk okay. turkey. So we have basically two days to get it to talk yeah. turkey. That's what I'm saying. So whatever we come out of that meeting on the fourth with on Tuesday, you're going to have like till Thursday to get materials turned around. And I, I want to know right now if that's going to be a problem. Yeah, Jeff, the only problem I would see for our administration is if, if on April 4th you change the percent, then the board has to come together to make okay. the changes before they can do anything, and then we would never get it done. That would okay. be the only concern. So at the 3.99, that's been all approved unanimously by the board, you know, comfortable. But if it's changing the budget, then we're going to have to bring out, we could have a special meeting, but then the administration is going to need some time to put it together. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so it is a pretty tight turnaround, two days. It's, yeah. yeah, I think, yeah. So what, it's a holiday, what, what's, right? when's, our meet, when's our actual town meeting? The 18th. So they need two it's weeks. Get, well, it's it takes get that to, long to print it and get it in the mail. It's got to get to the printer on Monday to be in houses on Saturday. Well, uh, so and then we we'll lose Friday. Days. Yeah. So it seems like that yeah. interval is a bad interval. I mean, so it's kind of a little tight. It seems yeah. tighter than usual. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. The, One of the things is I the can, budget hearing. I mean, does it have to stay on the 18th? That's a good question. Yeah, what I can look at is whether the April 4th meeting can move. Maybe I can move that back a few days. That's, that's probably what I'll do. All right. It is always pretty tight, but two days. Yeah, I think what Nicole pointed out is because of the Good Friday holiday, that's, oh, right. that's what that's made it the worst. Yep. Um, because you don't have like the weekend, basically. Right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna see maybe um, either move the April 4th meeting back which would impact this whole other time I even talked about, about getting emails out and responses back, at, or moving the April 18th up a day or two. Okay. Although the 18th would have to go a whole week to impact the um, printer date, because you, they typically want it in a home on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. So unless I'm gonna move the 18th, then we... I would think it would be easier for both the Board of Ed and General mm -hmm. Government if we met a little earlier yeah. and they had less time to respond to questions versus less time to potentially change the numbers if the yeah. numbers are yeah. decreased. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I agree. Right? Okay. 
So what date were you planning to get questions to us again? Well, what I was saying before was maybe by next Friday, which would be the that would give two weeks or, to and respond. And that would give us two weeks to the seventh. But now I'm saying, wait a minute. Maybe right. just a week for questions. Yeah. I'm going to have to get them to you fast. We're going to have to get them out faster okay. and yeah. pull the meeting back <clears throat> and allow to get the questions responded to. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll have to orchestrate that April 4th meeting. Who knows? We may end up making that like April second or first or something like that. Well, no, that's a weekend. We may make March 30th. 30th. March 30th. Okay. 30th. March 30th. Yeah. 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 Let's avoid meetings on April 4th. <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me walk through that with everybody. <coughs> Next is uh, review operating budget proposal. Okay. All right. Uh, so review operating budget proposals. Um, so if I can go back up a step. Um, yep. um, do you want a point of contact for the Board of Ed and the Board of Selectmen? Uh, to collect the, collect the questions. I, I volunteer do. for the Board of Ed to collect the, uh, the questions. Any questions for the Board of Ed? Okay. I right. do it for the Board of Selectmen. Sure. Okay. So Todd's going to collect them for Board of Selectmen, Jim for the Board of Ed. And I'm sorry, what date do we need to get it to these guys for them to turn it around? Tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Tonight would be great. Tomorrow would be great. Did you say next Friday, Jim? Well, that's a long time. Yeah, for I us think to that's too much. I think yeah. it's cutting them too close, though. That's what I was thinking. But how about their questions? So. Yeah, but they need time to respond. I mean, yeah. Oh, we're okay. trying to give so them more time, time to respond. More than a week. Yeah. Can we do can we next more, more time to respond. Monday or Tuesday? I mean, I think that's yeah. Oh, for us, we got our thing like Sunday or Monday. Yeah, Monday. We get five days. Yeah, Tuesday. It'll be great for me. Tuesday. Yeah. All right, get them to these guys by Tuesday, and they've got to turn it around and send it out following day. Tuesday is the. No, we're not going to have a meeting until. No, yeah. to, they're going to organize. Oh, for you guys to send them back. Yeah, yeah. Them we're going to compile just, all of them and compile, send them out correct. to compile, rather, their respective a, boards. A dump to the boards. Okay. Tuesday the 28th. You guys get them out Wednesday the 29th. Yeah. Uh, I think we can do that. What we're looking at. Okay. Wait Tuesday then. Right. Oh no, I'm, I skipped hey, the you're, you're missing a week. I, I no, Tuesday the 21st. Tuesday the 21st, <laughs> you get them out the 22nd. Yep. And we try to Tuesdays. get. Tuesdays. Am I looking at the right? Oh, okay, never mind. You're right. Ignore me. <laughs> and then we. Well, we don't have two weeks. I think we got to go faster than that. If we're talking about moving on meeting up to say March 30th, mm. can we commit can, to can we getting it to today? Sunday? Yeah. You get to whenever we have Sunday, you get out on Monday, and then we try to get back on Tuesday the 28th with responses, and we just take take what we get, and if we get some new responses live and get them on. So you want to do it Sunday the 19th? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be easier Questions for us. Questions by the 19th and, and... And you're going to send them to them on the 20th? By the yep. 20th. Yep. yep. Okay. And um, I would say if you know you have no questions, let those guys know. That way, if they've heard from everybody and it's Friday, Right? You That's guys fair. can send them earlier. That's so. fair. That's fair. And then you want them back to you by? Good question. <laughs> I've lost all sense of time. Well, it depends so, on when you set the next meeting. <laughs> I'm going to say it depends. If, okay. If we set the next meeting for the 30th, we'll probably want them back like the 28th. That'll give us okay. Tuesday and Wednesday night to look at them. If we end up with the meetings, Staying where it is, then I, then we don't need them until that Friday, I guess. 
Okay, yeah, we'll do our best to try and get them in early and you guys get them to us if you're able to early too. <coughs> Next year we'll put an extra week. I'm gonna order five weeks in April. Let's see when the holidays are. So, okay. Thank you. All right, anything else before we move on to the budget presentation? All right, uh, I guess we'll start with the board there. Are, are you guys ready to go? This is the capital. I want to first thank everyone for coming for this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I want to share them. Okay. Uh, share. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Board of Finance, for letting us come to this presentation. Uh, tonight, if you can see them, can we hit a light over there a little bit so people can see the screen? We've got some great pictures of their photos of girls in the manufacturing field trip, read across America, some athletic pictures, teacher of the year, student of the month, spirit day, positive promotion, and kids at play. Uh, our presentation tonight, yeah. if approved by the Board of Finance, like first at April 4th, but you may change your meeting earlier, uh, we will then be presenting this presentation on April 18th in the town hearing. Uh, tonight, am I correct, all the Board of Finance members have a copy of this already, you've had the time to take a look at it, so I don't want to I know, I don't want to bore you through the whole thing, and I know you ask us questions, and I know the town hearing on April 18th we'll be presenting our whole program again, hopefully it's at the 3.99. And then there's a town meeting on May 2nd to vote on the town budgets. Okay, again, 23-24. Again, next we're looking at projected enrollment. Uh, this is a slide we show every year. I think one thing clear about this slide, uh, we always read in the newspapers that school enrollment nationwide is declining, school enrollment in Connecticut is declining, school enrollment in East Granby has been slowly increasing. Uh, part of the decline is the people who move to East Granby. In other towns, we get a decline, we get an increase, it's a nice place to live. It's the reason why lots of us are here, and uh, we see here it's been that trend and that trend will probably continue. One thing about even these numbers, these numbers do not include students that go to parochial schools, students who are homeschooled, who go to alternate educational programs. Uh, we don't include those in our numbers, but we also have to provide them in our program because any of these students at any time can decide, and we've had them, they come back from a private school, they come back from a correct school, and we need to have space and programs to provide for them. So our projected enrollment uh, certainly can vary by those things. And like Missy said before, we have to plan a budget for what we're doing right now. If 10 kids decide to come back to school, uh, we'll have some different issues to deal with. Just a quick question. Yes, sir. Um, is that consistent across the schools, or are you seeing, like, some schools are seeing a larger increase than others? This there, slide right here, go. Oliver, uh, shows you. you at the bottom the elementary. Uh, in the middle is the middle school enrollment. And at the top is the high school. You can't tell by looking at the bars, but you can tell by looking at the numbers, you know, where it's going up and where it's going down at what grade level. Hopefully that will answer your question. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. I'm glad we have that slide. Your mind reader. Okay. <laughs> Elementary school project projections. Uh, we do have a class size policy that we've had for decades in East Granby to be able to provide a quality education. As we look at these numbers and we look at our two buildings we have, we are pretty close to filled capacity. We have already, as some of you know, moved the Board of Ed. Uh, we moved our conference room out and we've turned it into a classroom and, and next year we may have to do some more. We, we have been looking the past couple of years, we've talked to the Board of Finance about possibly moving our entire office out of the building. Uh, not only do we need space for programs we like to bring in, we're finding we need space just because of student enrollment. So uh, it's a catchy area with, with two schools here. Uh, and trying to keep them so we have space and offices. We have office space. I can't even begin to tell you where some people have their offices. Most people wouldn't even want to spend 15 minutes in some of these places. Uh, we have office space. But uh, it's working right now, and uh, we hope it continues that way. Next year, our numbers are going to be uh, 
a little bit higher. We may have to add another class. It's, uh, again, we'll wait and see on how that goes. For now, it's been managed quite well. Budget drivers, I'm sorry. I didn't just hit it twice. I hit it twice. Budget drivers, you know, you see these every year. This year we put numbers by them so you can see the net change, whether it's certified staff, whether it's non-certified staff, whatever it may be. Certainly those, those things drive our budget and those are items that we must provide. Many of them are contractual items and we are a, a people business. And we have salaries we pay, and our salaries are comparable to what's paid in the industry. And actually, if you look at the industry today, schools are having extremely difficult time uh, just staffing their, their buildings appropriately. And East Granby is struggling to do well. But it's, it's not easy, and we have positions that get open, and sometimes we have trouble uh, filling some of them. But uh, I think our administration's done an excellent job with it. Uh, you look at the drivers like any other year, we, we seldom see the numbers that go down. The only thing that's gone down was, uh, it really hasn't gone down, but Ray was able to do some things with health benefits. Uh, what we've done is taken a look at the money that staff pays us with about 20% Ray, they, they pay us during the year for their health insurance, and we've been able to put that into the budget and try to look at that cost reduction, but it's a way for us to see that there will be some dollars coming in and we can plan on that. In past years, some of that money may have been impacted to help with a surplus return to the town at the end of the year. Uh, over the past couple of years, you know, we've been moving more staff into grants, and you know, I think the ability to give back the dollars we've had in the past because of using grants so much is going to be very challenging. Our number one purpose is student achievement, and we're going to do what we have to do to achieve those goals. Uh, but that's an area that we think uh, can help us with health benefits, because we all know health benefits just get more expensive than they're necessary. Uh, but if you're looking down at those, they're all pretty common. Any questions on that one? I don't want to go through all my notes. Like I said, I know you guys will be asking us questions. Okay, here again, if we look at our 23-24 budget, if we look at what 23 was, we see what the 24 budget would be if we get 3.99, which comes up to $734,402 net change increase for next year. One thing I didn't say, that's not a bad number considering inflation for last year was over 8% nationwide, and certainly in Connecticut. So it's been very challenging for the administration and the board to do what they've done. But again, uh, fortunately our administration, we have grants, and fortunately we're able to use those grants, uh, and they're necessary for us to be able to move forward. Next one again, our draft from the work when we first started, where the administration looked at everything and looked at increasing one year to next year, what the increase could be, it was 7.1. Again, you know, that seems to be more in line with what the inflation was last year. After the Board of Ed workshop and Ray and Missy taking a look at things, and again, moving more things into grants, and, and that sometimes can be a catch-22 if you lose a grant. Uh, but the grants we're using, our grants we're hoping not to be losing. If a grant is going to be a two-year grant, we're not going to be throwing full-time staff into that grant when we know it's going to disappear. So like the Choice Grant uh, is our largest grant we get from the state of Connecticut and the city of Hartford, and those dollars uh, are very important for us uh, to be able to make some changes and be able to work the budget in. So after the Board of Finance guidance, they gave us a 3.99. The Board of Ed came back with these numbers of be able to uh, meet. Actually, the request is 4%. We are able to come up just uh, a hair under 4%. 3.99 is close to 4 as you can get. Again, here 3.99 reflects, again, that we're going to continue what we've been doing. Strong and comprehensive program. The budget is going to support plan contract improvements, negotiations have been done. Business office enhancements, software updates, and funding for Chromebook Refresh Program, which in the past, you know, we came to the Board of Finance and asked for money every year in a capital plan. We've now taken that into our operating budget because those Chromebooks have replaced textbooks. So we buy Chromebooks now instead of textbooks, so it's part of our operating. Uh, this budget also supports 
a 10% increase for group health insurance, and that's still being negotiated. We don't know what that final percent increase is going to be with our insurance provider. The budget, oh, go back again. Budget again reflects 5% in working comp. Uh, Adjustments have been made, things have been negotiated. Uh, I'll give our administration credit again. We're going to be paying 0.738 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity next year. Uh, maybe that's why the rest of us at home are paying so much, so the municipalities can pay so much less. But uh, for our budget, that's a real good price because I would imagine uh, we're paying twice that number in our homes. Uh, and we've got that right for the next two years, so we're in pretty good shape with that. Uh, next one will support 50% of the cost of the school resource officer and a required reading program that we're going to have to purchase. The state, the state of Connecticut is requiring all towns to uh, revamp the reading programs. And actually, they've recommended, I don't want to even say recommended, they've kind of said, here's the one you should have to choose and pay for. Uh, I know some districts are a little upset with it, but that's uh, we're looking for a reading program anyway, so it's really not difficult for us. Uh, the 50% for a school resource officer with the uh, selectman's office has been a good example of a shared service. So that we have been able to sit down and take a look at it. For years, we've heard people complain there's not enough police coverage on the town streets. I think the Board of Ed is very appreciative of for years, if the police would be at our schools in the morning when the buses are coming, the police would be at our schools in the afternoon when the buses are leaving, the police will be at our schools and are called as needed. But unfortunately, when they're at our schools, there's not a police person out on the streets. Now, with a shared service of a school resource officer, that school resource officer will be able to work with the school, be on call if the town needs the person, be available to the town during school vacations, and the town's one police officer will be on the streets all day without having up to run up to the high school or middle school or any of the elementary schools unless there was an absolute emergency. We would have a police officer that moves around between our three schools. So that seems to benefit the schools. It's really going to benefit the community. I think there'll be a Hopefully, on most days, two police people on duty around town of East Grand Bay instead of just one. And when they get tied up with the schools and there's none, and there have been issues, we look at nationwide, we look at the state, we look at East Grand Bay. Uh, the need of a resource officer is, a, is I think, a benefit for, for everyone. Uh, we want to make our schools a safe place uh, so students can come there and learn and feel comfortable about the situation and the environment they're in. Uh, again, I talked before about grants. And you look up here at the bottom line, both think about $1.4 million right, right now of our staff, full-time staff, we are charging it to our Open Choice grant, our IDEA, our ESSER, which is going to expire. Uh, the monies we have in our ESSER grant is to cover uh, some instructional people and a psychologist for the next two years and also comes out of our Title I grant. So that number has certainly increased, and there again, you know, I think in the past there may have been availability of more money left over at the end of the year. And I know we all like to see that, and we do too, uh, but uh, putting it in grants is going to mean uh, we really have to sharpen our pencils over there. No one has a sharper pencil than Ray Ingram. He's really pretty good at this. And, uh, we can't ask him to sharpen it anymore, though. <laughs> Okay, here again, pictures of the drama club, sports teams, music class, field trips, bonfire, Veterans Day event, and the Greenhouse Club. Potential budget impacts. Again, we have sustained funding through all grants past year 2024. 20, you know, we, we hope those grants continue. Again, we don't know what happens beyond that point. Evolving special ed needs, those things can change tomorrow. Again, our, our budget is based on today. We all know things happen over the summer. People move in, people move out, and uh, certainly new enrollments. We always see we get new enrollments in the last minute. And transportation, uh, we are in the process right now of negotiating a new three-year contract for bus transportation. So we're pretty much almost uh, complete with that. Uh, next one is mid-year health benefit changes due to major life-changing events. Uh, 
Sometimes people can change and decide mid-year that they want to take health benefits and they haven't done so previously. And health benefits are substantial costs, uh, but they are a benefit that all our employees are able to receive and sometimes people take them, sometimes people drop them. But those things can change and we don't know about it. The next one we all know about, unexpected building maintenance and repairs. Uh, we appreciate uh, all the help the Board of Finance has given us, uh, the help the town has helped with building maintenance of these schools, our town buildings, and uh, we've made it work. Uh, but we know that these buildings are not new. They've been renovated, but uh, not everything's been renovated. And it seems like we fix the things that need to be fixed and then something else breaks. Uh, so those are, again, budget impacts in the future. Physical space in the elementary school, I alluded to that earlier. Even the middle school now, you know, those kids grow up and go to middle school, and the space in the middle school, presently we're using old locker rooms in the gymnasium, we've turned them into offices and mini classrooms. And we're also looking at taking a multi-purpose room and dividing, it used to be a computer room into two classrooms. So we are trying to work with, again, creating more space. And the last one, field and athletic updates and maintenance. Uh, on that note, I would like to say publicly, because I did hear the comments tonight, uh, I'm certainly a supporter of fixing the field. So the Board of Education has not cut any field maintenance in the last number of years. The only time anything was cut was during the COVID year. And unfortunately, because that item hasn't been increased and that's been a hot potato between the town and the school board, you know what, enough money is not being spent on the fields. You know, that hasn't changed. Uh, it's gotten worse. After COVID, you know, we saved money during COVID, but uh, the fields were in worse shape the following year. We've had the same company that has been doing the fields for over 10 years. Uh, and I look at other fields in town when I go to the park, when I go to Grand Book, I always question as a townsperson, why are those fields always in such better shape? And uh, I know the town's done their part on it. I think the school board, who is really our prime purpose is student achievement. Uh, we use every field, every tennis courts, we use for nine weeks out of the year. The rest of the year, it's a community use, and we believe it's a shared service. And I will say publicly, because I've seen this for 40 years in East Granby, I think only the Board of Finance can fix it. Because the select been in their budget, they don't have the money to fix it. We don't have the money to fix it. And the concerns that the community has are legitimate. And the fields need to be fixed. We all know we go down to the ball game in Hartford, they, with the number of people they have and material they have, they probably spend more money in one day than we do in a whole season maintaining a field. Baseball fields and softball fields need weekly attention, or you're going to have injuries. Weekly attention, and we all know, we all know they have it. I mean, I know Todd was a soccer star in East Granby in his younger days, before the gray hair came in, and you know, he, he knew there were concerns of fields back then, and a lot of effort went into the fields. I think in the past, more effort went in from parents, coaches making kids do things. You know, you could do that at one time. And we had parents who would come when the sun set, because they were told not to touch the fields. They'd come on Sunday, and they would do what they had to do to make the field safe to play as safe as you can make them. Uh, the fields look pretty good, but again, I don't think the, it's the parents' role, I don't think it's the players' role to come on Sunday night and prepare the fields. But before every game, you'll see players out there raking the fields and doing what they have to do to make it better. Uh, so pretty much that's it with that. But I did want to say that we haven't cut the budget on, on fields. We just haven't added to it, and there's just, just not enough there. And I think that could have a budget impact, if not on the Board of Ed, if not in the town, uh, some way the Board of Finance comes up with something. These are our properties. We have to maintain them. Uh, people come and, and look at them, and, and East Grand, we can do better. We can do better. Uh, so what the kids were telling you tonight, 
that those type of things are active. So get done with my editorial on that one. Okay, going here to our anticipated Board of Ed revenue. Uh, this revenue comes from the state and from Hartford. Uh, no, this comes from the state, correct? Did both of these come from the state. This goes <laughs> direct to the town of East Grand. So this is money that the town receives after they give us our budget uh, that they'll get back from the state of Connecticut. That educational cost cherry number we know in the last few years hasn't gone up too much at all. Uh, again, Fortunately or unfortunately, depends on which way we're going to look at it, uh, the state decides on budgets and grants and money they're going to give on the town's ability to pay. And if they look at the numbers, East Granby has the ability to pay. And that hurts us because I watch TV and, and see all this money being given out, but we don't qualify. We don't qualify. Uh, projected Board of Ed invoice revenue, this is money that we, uh, $350,000, this is what goes back to Hartford, right? It would get back from Hartford for extra services that we provide. So not only do we get money from the state for kids that come here, but we also, any of their special education services, we build out back to Hartford. You may have seen in Hartford Current last week, the city of Hartford is, their, their Board of Education is really upset by all this because they're losing kids who are going to the suburban schools, and then the state gives them a little bit less money, and they're concerned that their budget's in a tough shape. Uh, pay to participate, we take in about $20,000 each year. Uh, I think that's maybe looked at in the future to see uh, what we can do with pay to participate, and the total estimate $370,000. Okay, Board of Ed grant revenue again. Uh, I mentioned the choice grants, our biggest one. We look down title grants, uh, ESSER 1 and 2 are gone. Uh, we see under ESSER 3, uh, 290,000, but again, we have that earmarked for staff, school psychologists, uh, interventionists for the next two years, so that money is allocated, and a school mill program of $8,000. Additional grants in process are awaiting decision. I mean, the Board of Finance, I know the town and the Board of Ed and the administration worked so diligently to apply for that HVAC grant, which had deadlines and deadlines and deadlines and dates, and they were going to let us all know in January. Today is March 15th, and we don't know yet. We, we just don't know yet. They haven't told anyone. Uh, the next grant is a technology grant that we usually apply for each year, then a connectivity grant. We're not sure if there's going to be any funding for this this year. A school safety grant, which we'll always apply for, and Department of Justice school safety grants, another one. Uh, cost savings. Uh, we did do a lot with LED lighting, all facilities, which should, over time, our electric bill should be declining somewhat. Uh, we are early exploratory stage for putting up solar cells, thinking about where we can do that. It does. That will involve a partnership with the town because, again, they are town buildings, town properties. Uh, so it's really a, a town school board thing. But uh, with some of our buildings and our roofs, uh, we're not sure if our roofs are safe enough to put solar cells up. Uh, we'd have to look at all those things, but certainly it would be uh, worth exploring to take a look at that in the future. Energy alternatives, uh, looking at fuel cells and thermal. It's interesting, you might remember a few years ago we talked about Eversource had a grant if we brought natural gas up to the school, they offered a deal. Uh, we didn't do that, that deal's not available and we're not looking to bring natural gas up there. But any kind of alternatives we can come up with uh, in the future would be helpful and would be uh, cost savings. And again, expansion of student support services, if we can start providing programs here, we can save some money. If Granby provided a program, we could send kids there. If Suffield did, we could send kids there. Right now, we're all paying transportation costs to send kids to Berlin or to Avon, where they go to schools with kids that they don't know anyone else. Uh, many times we find the kids come back, they like to be in town, they like to be going to the same school their neighbors go to, and it gives us an opportunity for our staff to do the great things that they do in-house. When they leave, we spend a lot of money, and we really, uh, don't have as much of a handle on the results. Student support services. With my page, I can't read that. One. Okay. No, I'm getting it. I just can't read it. I'm just <laughs> talking and not looking at it. Okay. 
Wonderful. Okay, I still can't read it. <laughs> but uh, looking at, okay, if you look at the various vendors we have, hourly rates, transportation costs for buses, para paraprofessionals, physical therapy. I can just read it down there, okay. Again, these are all estimated cost avoidances that we can have for the year 2023. And again, with one of our student support services that we've recently added to the system, that has been able to help us have a cost avoidance. Doesn't save us money, but we can avoid spending more money. So we're a growing young computer community. And again, we need these services to provide for our kids. And having them in-house has been a productive way of doing it. When comparing same services, I talked about going to other towns. By providing the in-house program, it had an estimated cost of $678,000, as opposed to a tuition program of one point, almost $1.7 million. So when you send kids out, you also have to have special transportation. So bringing things in and running it ourselves would be beneficial. Okay, this slide here, you guys have seen this, is a historical slide of money we've given back and budget increases we've had for the past six years. It shows uh, where we started, the final approved percent increase, and the funds returned to town for the past six years. We are also able to set aside siding, uh, funding into a non-lapsing account, thanks to you, in 2019-2020. And we've used this funding, we've used it for emergency building maintenance, we are using it for $10,000 a year to uh, repair and recondition the tennis courts because a few years ago we were told it was going to cost $350,000 to replace them. Uh, we can't fix them. The roots of the trees have done the damage underneath them, so they just keep cracking every winter. So if you don't keep it up each spring, then they would fall apart. Uh, the company that does the work will guarantee their work for a year. So naturally, if you miss a year, then you miss the warranty. When I go up, when I go up there and walk to tennis courts, I see everything they patched last year is pretty much cracked again. Uh, they'll fix those at no cost, but then there certainly are new ones. Uh, we had huge, uh, kind of huge. Uh, what kind of trees are oak trees? Huge oak trees around the tennis courts, and they've been there for years. They finally cut them down, but the roots you know, grown under the courts and they've caused their damage. So uh, repairing them, that's going to be an item down the road. I think you're going to see an RFP coming down the road for ma a major field renovation, which will probably include renovation of tennis courts because you just can't keep fixing something that breaks all the time. And those are the only uh, tennis courts we have in town. And last, you know, we're thankful to support the community and the trust that you give in our school district. Uh, we try to make responsible decisions on financing. The Board of Education this year, I'm happy to say, has voted unanimously on every budget question we've had so far. Uh, the group has taken a look very carefully. Uh, we've challenged administration. We'll continue. We, we know next year our grants end, and we're not going to end our budget process next month. We're going to have a budget committee that's going to uh, pick it up at the end of the year. Take a look at the summer so we know where we are. Uh, we don't, do not want to come to the end of next year when all these grants are gone and then say, where do we go? So uh, this is going to be a prime function of the board and yep. all the board members are on board for it. So with that said, that's the end of my presentation on the next year's budget. I thank you very much. We look forward to the questions you sent us. Hope you send them to us promptly because our administration does have a lot of things mm -hmm. that they have to do and we'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Any questions right now? I Just don't want to not answer a question. Got I've got Ray and Missy here. Hey Bob. Yep. Ahead, um, what happens when uh, it's it's unlikely the the level of funding for Besser and ARPA grants are going to continue next year? So what service do, what services do you expect to have to cut back on next year and the, in the future years? Well, you're actually absolutely correct in your assumption and that's why my comment was our budget committee is not we usually end after the town meeting we're now going to start looking at next year we can't wait till january to do that so i can't answer the question because i don't know what it's going to be uh, we, we do know the staffing we put in there 
in the grant, we said from day one, wasn't going to be something that we were going to ask to keep, or we were not going to be able to. But uh, to answer the question more specifically, we want to be able to do that in September and October. Okay. But I, I can't do that tonight. Okay. I, we have no idea. I'm just going to Go interject ahead. for a second. Um, the two positions that were full time, and we did this purposely, we did not, um, we made sure that our budget, we were able to support our full time staff. Other means. The two positions, however, that we were able to support through ESSER funds were our school psychologists, which we have been in need for for a number of years, as well as an intervention specialist at our high school. So um, they are under the understanding when we have hired them, which is part of the reason why it's been challenging to hire, um, that the position will not continue um, in, as far as the hiring process is concerned when the grants end. ESSER 2 ends at the end of this fiscal year, ESSER we have one more year on ARP or ESSER 3. So I just had a quick question. Between the last version and this version, I think it's about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar difference. Mm -hmm. yep. What where were you guys able to find that hundred and fifty in savings? Well we didn't find it, went more into the grants. Okay. okay. Just, for we're just getting overloaded in the grants and using them for salaries, and that's why I said it then becomes more difficult to have a you know money left over at the end of the year. Yep. Uh, in the past you know, it must be more flexible with grant money years ago than it is today. But today we have to use it from the get-go. We've been able to utilize our open choice tuition grant in the past to support any changes mid-year with student needs and such, as well as maintenance, which is why we've never needed to come back to the town with any with any overage. So what we're doing essentially is saturating that um, grant amount um, a little bit more kind of each year with salaries. Okay. Yeah, we worked very hard at that. 3.99, if you look around the state and what budgets are increasing, that's on the low side, 3.99. But again, we loaded up with grants. We thought, you know, the grants can help the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. You know, we use the grant. If we got the grant money, we'll use the grant money. Otherwise, we have a budget problem. Mm -hmm. And that's what grants are for. Okay. I want to another one if I may. Right, you and I talked briefly in the quarter of last time. What's the scientific evidence that this new English curriculum will actually enhance student performance? And and if it's curriculum? the the it, I, I guess it's an English cord, uh, English curriculum for third grade. Is it? It's the it's it's a reading grade. Reading reading, reading, yes. reading uh, program. And if it's mandated by the state. Uh, just another unfund, unfunded mandate from the state. Um, mm -hmm. What's the effort we made to get them to fund it? And what's, what's the evidence that it's actually going to? Sure. Let, let me just start by saying um, our teachers and our ed education professionals agree that we need to look more holistically. There's five components go, that go into the science of reading, the best way to teach reading. And education evolves. It's not stagnant, right? So as we learn better ways of teaching, we, we implement that into our study. So we have been without a program. So we actually need a program anyway. So it has been actually a big value to us and our staff to be able to find a program. Now in terms of, and we're actually very happy with one of the programs that was offered um, that supports those five components in the science of reading. We have contacted the state, because you know we're going to be always contact the state about money when we need to. So we're always fighting for the small districts. Um, and our understanding is they are going to offer some grant funding in July. So rest assured we will <coughs> continue to um, follow up on that, that and, and do our best to yeah. obtain some of that funding. And yeah, that's been a hot topic around the state, forcing you to change a range program. Sure. And some towns have been saying, we don't want to change our range right. program. And, and some towns, oh, we're not in Glastonbury. Glastonbury said, we're not going to. Okay. But Glastonbury can say that. Okay. Uh, it's not as easy for a little town to say that. So and, and we're not opposed the to the reading program. program. No, we need a reading program. Know. We're not opposed to the um, implementation of those components. So, you know, we're, we're good with that. Dollar for us, it's timely. We, we need a reading program. So 40 grand, 70 grand. I've heard numbers all. Well, uh, Marjorie Ladder, director of curriculum, uh, was able to work with the company that has been the chosen company of our teachers. And we're looking at approximately 115,000 over a five-year period. Okay. So it's a it's a five-year, you know, the more years you purchase, and that's one of the items we're looking to do a one-time purchase out of our ESSER funds. 
I'm just sort of pulling the thread a little bit. So why are you happy with it? So I kind of kind of go into Jim's point, you know, scientific. But why you, you said you're happy with it? What 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 pleases you about this program? What does it do for the students? What does it do for the teachers? That's probably another whole hour of conversation, but I can. And you can always go to a board of ed meeting and ask curriculum <laughs> questions. All that. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know it's a board of ed question, but nonetheless. Well, I, I can just share just just quickly that um, one of our benefits in East Frame is we are able to have our teachers be part of the decision process. So just like we did with our math program, we uh, brought in several programs, and all of our K-5 teachers were able to assess using a rubric. So knowing what they know about teaching and the gaps in what our students are finding and learning, we've had very good um, results with our new math program. We've done the same process with the reading. So we are participating in a state um, workshop. There's about, I think, um, seven, eight of us that attend every other month. It's a workshop put on by the state. It's the top people in reading instruction, <clears throat> and we take that back to our schools and our classrooms and, and further it. So it's really about what the teachers know about their kids, what they know about the data, what we know of some gap areas, and what a new, and I want to do the word program, because it's about the teacher who instructs the program, but it does support um, areas that we have seen some gaps in. It still feels like a top-down approach versus a bottom-up approach. Those, those students best with the teachers. That's kind of my, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. Well, that's a good point. Some, some towns probably need to be told what to do. If the state doesn't tell them to do it, they're not going to do it. Okay. Uh, but they lumped everyone into it, including us. But we need, we need either new program or anything. So, okay. Anyone else? Thank you much for listening. Thank you. Audience, very thankful. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. <laughs> We're not as fancy, okay? We'll have a PowerPoint. We'll have a PowerPoint for the public hearing. I can't see my Everyone has a folder that I passed out before the meeting? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jay. You'll find a, a, a couple of different schedules in there. You'll find uh, the role of analysis uh, that compares where we're at on February 7th to where we're at now. You'll also find a pie chart that came, contains the major drivers. Keep it so we can hear them, okay? Sorry? I said keep it down so we can hear you. <laughs> they were talking. They were Sorry. talking. Yeah. All right. Should I start over? No, I no. can hear you. I was asking them to quiet down so I could hear you talk. Okay. If you want to start over, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, no, I'm good. I heard what you said. I'm kidding. Okay. So anyway, um, there's a couple of things in the folder. There's a, there's a pie chart. Let's start with that. The pie chart contains all the drivers of the budget, 100K or more. Those are all the key services in the town. And what we've done with our department heads, we've, we've looked at all the spend, and we've come up with, with these drivers that's, um, that's based on, again, 100K or over. And when you go back to February 7th, and you look at the roll-up as to where we're we at, that's the, the second schedule, this one right here. We are approximately 372K over and or 7.1%. And what we were able to do, Eden working with department heads and myself, we brought it down to 4% or 208,000 over previous fiscal year budget, which was 5,226,000. So we hit our 4% number. Um, again, the pie chart depicts all of the big spend, 100K or more. And just to summarize, based on the recent direction from the Board of Finance, we're going to be a 4% year over year 
23 to 24. Just to keep in mind that we still have uh, physicians that we funded through ARPA, which is approximately 100K, and we put that at the top line. So when you look at the summary and you look at the right-hand column near comments, those are the biggest variances from the top down. So what we did is we added the ARPA into the contingency of 54K because we want a clear line of sight into that. It's not going away. It's going to present itself in, in next year's budget. And we need to, you know, as a group, we need to work together to uh, make some decisions as far as what we're going to do. You know, are we going to factor it in? Are we going to make other decisions elsewhere in our budget? Um, so that's the ARPA. Ian, anything to comment on that? Um, as far yeah, as far as ARPA, um, we did have um, a big part of our budget, or a part of our budget, which isn't going to be popular tonight, is um, the SRO. We did factor in 10 months for the Board of Ed and two months for the town. Um, I did have some initial conversations with Ray, but it's pretty much where it stopped. Um, so we were able, that was an ARPA expense, which we were able to work into the budget, but we did only factor in, I think, 17% and 83% for the Board yes. of Ed, which looks, sounds like something we might have to work on. But um, we figured because he, because the SRO is working in the schools 10 months out of the year, and after talking with other towns, a resident trooper who initiated the program, he felt 10 months and two months was fair. Um, so it sounds like it's gonna be a discussion, but um, that's what helped bring us to our 4%. Um, do you want to talk, speak to can the fire? Can I ask a question about that? Yeah. So I think what you're saying is that the town put budgeted for two months of a school resource officer. Mm -hmm. What did the board budget? 50%. 50%. So we're, we've got to come up with four months somewhere. Yep. Okay. What is a per month number? I mean about 35% more. 35 Thousand or thirty-five percent. No, how, how much 70, per month? Seventy thousand. Seventy k. It's a year. year. It's seventy k. Yeah, but that's what's in the police budget for the SR. Yeah, but that but a month is so whatever. So yeah, four months at seventy k. So it's an under under fund at the moment. Okay, sorry. It's about 5,800. Are we talking this fiscal year or are we talking next fiscal year? Next fiscal year. Next. Just this fiscal year, year, year we're paying paid. with ARPA funds. Okay. Oh, okay. We split it 50-50 okay. this fiscal year with ARPA funds, so we did work that. So you're trying to negotiate the total. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, another big um, way we got to the 4% was um, capitalize, capitalizing um, funds for the fire department and we actually have we have our fire admin on the zoom call and he's going to talk about it i don't know if you want to go into yeah it. i could just uh, yep. kind of give a high level overview so when we got together the last time we were 372 over so what i did is i went back and i looked at all the budgets I looked at the fire department very carefully because there was 125k budgeted for various types of equipment so what I did is I called our CPA and I said, you know, it feels like capital to me. We talked about the capitalization the guideline, 5K or greater. Uh, we also talked about spend that's recurring, okay? And the definition of capital is it's got to meet the capitalization threshold of 5, 5K or greater, and it, and it shouldn't be recurring, meaning if I buy an ax for the fire department, I'm not going to buy an ax year over year over year over year. So we discussed further with Mark and Eden, and we said, okay, what are, what are we trying to accomplish here? What we're trying to accomplish here is, for our all-volunteer all fire department, we want to modernize it, okay? So, so we labeled it the East Granby Fire Department Modernization Upgrade. I got together with Mark, spoke to Mark about my discussion with our accountant, and Mark came up with a five-year rolling capital plan. Again, in the spirit of keeping our fire department modern, we should have capital spend year over year over year. And it really 
you know, in, in my opinion and the opinion of our accountant, it really doesn't belong as part of the fire department budget. Because again, it, it meets the capitalization guideline. So that's 125? Yes. That's just for this year? Yeah, yeah, we pulled it out. So well, what Mark did is Mark Mark prepared a five-year rolling plan. Right, I guess what I'm saying is you pulled it out of operating this year to put into capital for this year. No, no, no I'm sorry, FY24. Over the yeah, next five years. It's FY24. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. I think we're saying the same thing. <laughs> pulled it out and added more because there's, obviously there's, um, money their fire department needs and isn't having because yeah, of the yeah. overspends. That's, right. That's what Mark was going to speak to is what is needed really. And his the reason he was hired on was to get us on mm -hmm. a schedule of replacement of equipment mm -hmm. and that is really what he wants to put into capital instead of our operating budget. Okay, so Mark or Ray is going to break down year by year how much we're adding to yes. each year for capital? Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I did, I know we spoke about it at the fire study committee. Yep. Um, DPW, Public Works does it with road maintenance. They have money in there every single year, 200000 every year for amending the roads. Which, yeah, it's a, I think a whole separate another conversation. Topic. Yeah. Another, another <clears throat> meeting, but. Um, yeah, I mean, my, just to point out, that doesn't. Moving 125 of expense from operating to capital doesn't add 125 to the capital fund. So, right, the fund is the fund, right? right? And we're going to put in. We typically have put in 600k a year. Uh, we'll have some lively discussion about how much, whether we can add more to it. So that 125 goes into that same pool and it's going to fight against other priorities. I mean, that's where you guys will have to. You know, make those calls. Well, mm -hmm. the offset is the critical part. What's the offset? In the yeah, like if those go to the top of your list, then something else that what did you think is on your list is going to get deferred. That's all. Well, I think we need to look at our capital plan on the whole, right? Because in September. Well, no, because well, the problem is in October we added the new roof, and we didn't take anything out for that. And because we put so much into raising. The operating budget this year, we're not going to be, to Jeff's point, I don't think, able to put as much into capital if more than we normally do. So we're going to have to take a hard look at our capital plan and say, all right, some of this stuff's got to get postponed a couple of years. Yeah. So I just want to make sure but that's understood, that just because it's now part of your capital plan doesn't mean it's guaranteed to be funded. We're going to have to evaluate everything and prioritize everything. Understand, this okay. is a proposal. Right. Yeah. Yep, yep, okay. Okay, this is us looking at every cost center department very critically, okay, and saying, okay, do we have an opportunity to capitalize any of this? Does it make sense? Again, we reached out to our accountant. Yep. I have a background in this in terms of, you know, looking at all different kinds of spend and what meets the capitalization criteria, and it just felt like capital to me. I had a discussion with Mark. He described each line item. Um, I don't think anybody's concerned yeah. about you calling it capital. Yeah. The concern is what what are you offsetting to compensate for the 120? That's uh, if I'm reading you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Do you so want how would you? Yeah. Why are we here? Well, well, <laughs> no, actually, I, I don't know if we want to get into discussion of capital. I was just pointing out. Right. Just because we move it over there, that doesn't mean it's not approved. It. Right. Okay. It's, it's now it's going to lobby with all those other things for that limited okay. money, and we'll have that discussion. All right. Right. Okay. Do you want Mark to talk about some of the items, or are you good with that? I mean, at some point, I mean, I'd like to see that. I'd like to hear, too, because it's part of the plan that you're presenting. I think it's pertinent to what we need to know if this is what you're presenting. Um, is he? Well, so, yeah, I mean, let's be mindful of time. I mean, we're not going to make capital decisions tonight, right? If they have a capital request on the... Well, no, he's talking about for, for the budget, budget capital decisions. We're just saying so the budget. Jay is talking about moving 125,000. No, I'm, I'm referring in, to the, the field. That's what's making our budget work, though. So I don't know if it's. All right, well, let's well, let's start. If, but I, I, mean, I guess we only if had five minutes to talk about the budget. So sure. So let's go. Just, let's, can let's give him five go. minutes. Yeah. To he invited him. Let's let him talk. Is he on? 
Yeah, he should be. Mark, are you there? He might be on mute. I see him there. So well, that would throw a whole wrench into this. Yeah. He's hiding in the audience, should we? <laughs> Oh, he's on, he's on mute. Oh, it's, it's my fault. Ask, um, there he goes. Hello, can you hear me now? We yeah. Can. Yep. Yes. can you hear me? We can. Yes. All right, I'm unmuted. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, everyone from the National Fire Academy. <laughs> I trust everybody made it through the storm okay. Yep. Um, so uh, apologies for not being there in, 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 in person. Uh, no disrespect is, in, is intended. Uh, I had a tremendous opportunity to be here to, uh, by invitation by FEMA to participate in a grant review process that we've uh, been be benefactors of. So it was, a, it was a great opportunity for me to see behind the curtain and I didn't want to lose it. So um, what is the first question that I could attempt to answer for you? We just talked about the $125,000 we moved into capital for, um, yes. So, um, so, so yes, um, it, it, that really, I mean, as far as balancing the book, so to speak, some of that's coming out of our regular operations budget and being put into capital. Um, I, I, I trust in what, what Jay says and he thinks it's a smart move. Uh, my only concern is that, you know, again, if it's not in writing, it might not be there. So some of those items uh, are, are largely centered around general maintenance, uh, equipment and, and PPE. So uh, those are items that have to get taken care of every year. And if you're telling me um, that, you know, if it's in capital, it's not locked down, that could be a great loss to the fire department. That's going to put me and everyone else uh, in that room uh, in bad light with that. Um, we uh, took a, a look at some of the significant capital items um, uh, being uh, particularly fire hose, um, air bottles and air packs, which were, were just acquired through a grant uh, but looking forward, we have to expand upon the capabilities of that and start to score away a little bit of money for uh, future replacement. There was a new line item there uh, on capital uh, with respect to um, medical equipment and supplies. Uh, but largely speaking, that's stuff that should be getting paid for every year. Some of it would be taken out of the present, uh, the present operations budget and put over there, uh, thus re, uh, reducing uh, the existing operations budget by uh, a, a pretty good piece. Um, now that said, um, if I could take a, a, a quick tangent uh, for a second, um, uh, when we uh, broke after the last meeting, I wanted to take a quick look at our, our, our hard look at our present operations budget because we were expecting to be significantly over. Um, I am pleased to uh, announce the fact that um, Communication uh, has been a problem. I, I brought it up last time. I think that seems to be a little bit of our issue. Um, I, I, I took a look at the books the fire department had and compared it to what the town had, and there was a significant amount that the fire department did not have logged in their books to the tune of $64,000. And uh, that is partly due to the fact that the town pays directly uh, and keeps the fire department out of the loop on a significant number of payments, and they're large payments. So the fire department thinks they're on one spending path when they're really not. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I think that we've identified that, we know that, and we've curtailed the spending. Uh, we're somewhere about 15% short of um, the, the, the total for the year. And I think for the next three or, or remaining months, if we uh, really tighten up the, uh, the, the buckle down, um, we have a hard stop anyway, um, and we're only spending emergent money, we should be uh, at or under budget, uh, in part thanks to Department of Public Works and in particular um, items that have popped up since then, if they weren't incredibly involved, uh, he's been gracious enough to, to uh, help us out by uh, going and picking up parts and putting them in at cost. So uh, there's been a tremendous uh, amount of savings brought to uh, us by Department of uh, Public Works. So um, with respect to the, the, this year's operations budget, um, I, I think we're in, in reasonable shape. Um, but there has to be, I think at some point, whether we capitalize it or increase the budget, um, there, there needs to be some type of increase. Um, I can speak to any questions on that. Uh, again, I think it, it's a bit of a, a conversation between you all, how we're going to do that, uh, capitalization-wise or not. 
Um, but I, I think that's, uh, in a nutshell, uh, what, what I had to say. So at some point, Mark, are, are you going to be able to provide us with like a visual of the five-year capital plan changes that you're proposing on what you're moving from uh, operating yes, capital? Yes, I'm sorry. I, 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 forwarded the, I forwarded the J, and he didn't get the telepathy uh, <laughs> to, to send it uh, to you. I apologize. It's my mistake. Again, uh, communication. Um, I, I do have a breakdown, and yes, I will get it to you as soon as possible. I can send it to them tomorrow, too. I think you sent it to me also. Did you send it to me? Yeah, you had a copy. Yeah, I have a copy. Uh, I do we, have a copy. I didn't know if it was after that, but yeah, I have a copy. I can send it to them tomorrow. I mean, I don't know how everyone else feels, but I mean, to me, I think the most important thing is that we have everything in the correct place, right? Like, if it's capital, it should be in capital. If it's operating, it should be in operating. And then we kind of figure out what's in capital and prioritize what's in capital. And, and I think it's good we have the conversation because we we're moving it to the, on the table far enough ahead of our capital plan in the fall that we can work all this right. out. But we, you're right, we, we do have a figure we have to agree upon for the budget. And that's, I think, the concern that was being shared. Like, where is that window coming from? Yeah, yeah, Mark, I mean, I mean, the conversation we were having, I don't know if you heard it, but you know, you know, right now, I guess the analogy I'll use is right now all those items are being paid out of your checking account. Now you said, I'm not yeah. going to pay for those out of checking account, I'm going to pay for them out of the savings account, which is fine, but there's no more money in the savings account. Like, just because you want to pay for it out of that account, that account still has money that may or may not be spoken for. There's a process for spending it, and um, it just means that those items go into that process. And, and will get prioritized. They, and it may be the way you yeah. describe them, they'll probably be the first ones out. Who knows? But that, that's all we're trying to say. Uh, Jeff, uh, respectfully, no, I, I, we, I appreciate that. And I if we have a capitalization policy, the way I understand it, shouldn't we be following it? You would, to the point that you have money. Buy yes. it. Yeah, that's, but we can't yeah, spend what we don't money. have. That, that capital fund has only so much money in it. So we have a net, we have so, a budget we present to the town. There's so many dollars in it. You just took money from one and are claiming a reduction in one, putting it in another, but we're not adding it to the other. Yeah. This is my perspective, okay? So if you if you just did that, we got to say, okay, what is your real budget? Did you really, you know what I'm saying? Did you really get down to four percent, or did we just move the shoe to another foot and say, okay, we don't we're, we can't, we're not calling it part? You, know, you get it? It's a finite set of dollars that we're proposing to the town. Just because it got moved from one to the other doesn't change the net effect on the over. No, we, we I, can, can I continue? Um, and Mark, we'll get right back to you. We, we did identify other saves. Oh, you know, know, in terms yeah. of you yeah. know insurance, if, if you look at year over year uh, for our insurance, it went up 5%, okay? Because we, we shifted gears and we went with a new carrier called Kerma, and we realized a 40K savings in workers' comp. That, coupled with an offset to Anthem, unfortunately, for health insurance, that went up 7.1%. But if you look at our insurance year over year, 5%, that, that's, that's a pretty good savings. Not, well, not savings, but modest increase. Yeah, but I think their, their point is, cap, I mean, it's obviously capital. There's only so much money that's in the capital budget to spend. And it, it will have to get voted on anyways, what we spend it on. Right. I understand yeah. that. Yeah, yeah like, we're either going to have to put more money into capital right. or we're going to have to remove some items that we already had earmarked for that money or yeah. postpone them. or All those other things you mentioned are great. Those are reductions. Yeah. Those are like, you didn't move yeah. those to capital. Right. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, if that's the right place for it to be, and it sounds like you're following the policy, and it is, yeah. that's step one. Step two is then we prioritize and budget for what's in these buckets. It's my understanding, too, Mark, you can correct me, but I think some of that 125 is items that were never even in our operating budget that we need and need to replace and just haven't ever budgeted for, correct? That is, that is correct. We have never budgeted for PPE. That's, that's a significant portion. That's $20,000. I had increased maintenance by 15 simply by looking at the historical number there, we're regularly um, it, uh, blowing the roof off of that. And with the new truck and the aged fleet, I thought it was prudent to bump that up. Um, I also asked for something that's never been in there, 
is medical equipment. Uh, it stands to reason for me if we're going to send uh, the fire department to medical calls that we should give them equipment. Um, and the uh, addition to air bottles, w which was new. Um, again, the reason I'm down here in Maryland is part of the, Amer uh, the assistance to firefighters grant. There was $3 billion of funds requested by 7,000 different applicants for only $300 million. That fund might not be there in the future. And if we're gonna think of, oh, well, there's always gonna be grant money or something that we can rely on, which many departments and towns do for big pay, uh, for uh, big purchases, such as the air packs that we were just lucky enough to get, or hose. I'm seeing a lot of these recurrences throughout the country. Everyone asks for the same thing. Those funds might not be there. So we need to plan for the future and start to address our own needs smartly, a little bit at a time, from year one through five on our capital plan. So that, that's why it's there. Um, it's never been done before here, but we, we can't get into a cycle of, you know, oh my God, all of our stuff is expired or it's fallen apart, rush to get money. If we do this, it's, it's I think, as, as Jay suggested, um, a smart way to forecast the needs of the fire department. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it hasn't been budgeted, so there's sticker shock to the amounts there. And I, I understand that. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like to say just one more thing, not to beat a dead horse, but when we when I went to department heads for their budget requests, it's part of the reason we were closer to 7.1 is because we had all these new expenses, and it was a smart way to mm -hmm. keep operating where it is and just move it to capital. Yeah. Keep operating up. Operating to keep right. capital items capital items. Exactly. And, yep. and I mean, it was a big, big Mark came with, to us with a bigger budget than normal because of the needs that we have. So, guys have question, any more questions? So, Mark, you had mentioned that the fire department and the town were not necessarily on the same page as far as what our spends were on a given month. That's now been resolved. Is that something that? Yeah, I, Jay are working on. There were some payments that were made to the wrong areas. Our accounts payable person is no longer with us, so we're okay. correcting some of those issues that we had, yeah, which is good news for the budget line. So, I've got a question. Um, yep. What are the potential deficiencies or pitfalls you to see in the budget you presented? Where's behind the curtain? Are there uh, perhaps? Now, or events that we foresee may disrupt the disrupt, disrupt the budget. I think mainly. Hey, uh, uh, um, I, I don't think it's directed to you. No. It's okay. Okay. Thank you, though, Mark. Um, For instance, the, the board of ed is uh, the special ed is a perfect example. It, it's it's always a wild card, and it's it's variable year to year, and literally month to month. If depending on people moving in and out of district, um, you see any potential? Our ARPA salaries. We still have two. We still have two. Um, we have one custodian and a part-time admin on ARPA, which we're well, hoping to be able to work into our budget next ah, year. Gotcha. Okay. We tried this year. They're covered this year. Um, so or. So we may lose them next year if we don't get right. grant money or find means to. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And a little bit in social services and, okay. and park rec. That's a concern right now. That's why we factored in our contingency. We want folks to be aware that, yeah, they're in ARPA for FY24, but we're going to have to have a, another discussion for FY25. Gotcha. So that does bring up an interesting question. Is there a cap on how much we can put in to contingency? Like we were at 1% and you're proposing going to three and I agree with the reasons why you want to do that, but there's no state restrictions or anything like that that would limit how much we can put into contingency in a given year? I think it's at the discretion of board of selectmen. That's kind of my personal view, but I don't think we've ever. Okay, I feel like that's, that's my, that's that's my question. Unfortunately, he's not here. I thought Mark Porter had brought that up as a concern last time. We can find out. Okay. My understanding, that's been the amount for the last several years. 
54. Yeah, yeah and, and you're talking about tripling that now, so it's now going to be 3% of our Double. budget. Mm -hmm. I thought idea? it was 54. Yeah, it's it going 54, from 54 right, right. to 164, yeah. right? But again, the 110 is in there as a placeholder. Okay, it's really contingency slash, or, you know, money set aside, you know, for Arbor right now. Okay, we're not. We're we're just putting it onto the schedule because it does pre create. Yeah, and, and, and again, I, I agree with what you guys are, are doing the logic. Yeah. I just want to make sure there's nothing that limits us that right. would prevent us from doing that. That's all. Gotcha. Well, when you look at page two of the schedule, what we do at the bottom is we back out the 110. So really what we're doing is we're chewing up to 54K. That, that The 110 is not part of any of our our variances or, you know, our 4%. So just to, so I'm clear, so the contingency was 54 you're proposing it go up by 110 to 164. No. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. But you're saying you're not going to spend that 110. It's just there as a placeholder? I'm sorry, I can't it's hear you. It's just there as a placeholder. There We're not spending it, yeah. Right. So then oh, right, right. It's just, it just there as a placeholder for awareness. If you look at page two of the schedule, we backed up, we back out the 110. Mm -hmm. we, we just back it up. That's all. It, 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 so, it has. It has nothing to do with FY24. So there is a placeholder because we want, we want to create the awareness around it. So then you would end up returning that money to the general fund at the end of the year, but you know if everything ran to the penny, right? You return because the budget you're presenting yes, includes we would return, that. Right. You return that one ten. No. Yeah. No. I, I, I'm sorry. We're we're not. It's at, he asked if we're returning the 110 at the end, but it's it's just a placeholder. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But it's part of the four percent. Just to keep yes, okay, just, just to keep you aware that that's what we're we have in ARPA. It's not part of the four. Has nothing to do with the four percent. Okay, so it's just a number. Okay, because again, when you look at page two, we minus it out. Okay, and if you look at the calc, you are your FY23 versus FY24, and you compute the difference of 164,000, it's not, the, the one tenth doesn't commit a validity. So, another way to get to the same number would be to have a $54,000 contingency then, right? Yeah. Yeah, just remove the ARPA. This is just, this is just a, a, a yeah. number that they put in there, right. and they backed it out over here. Yep. So it's really not a hundred and fifty four thousand yeah. dollar contingency. So I'd be inclined to want to show it as as what it is. As fifty four right. without the backup. Okay. Show it as fifty four. Yep. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. Any other any first of all, anything else to present? Um, no, I wanted to, um, Heather just stepped out. I just wanted to respond to her email. I could do it in public comment though. Not really, I don't know, because I'm do I sure can't make a comment or sure you can be a member of the public. <laughs> sure you can. Yeah. Sure you can. But it has to do with the board of selectmen, so I don't know. Um, oh, I can wait till she gets back. Okay. So. Does anybody else have questions for the board of selectmen? Yeah, you said uh, staff resigned recently. Are we any changes? We're hiring, in, we're interviewing, so. At the same price point or different yes. levels or same so price that won't point. change at all? That won't change. That's the economic development? Nope. No, that's um, accounts payable. Tables. Okay. Yep. So it looks like 3%. That's, That's a basic position right now. Yes. Yes. Um, oh, it is. Awesome. Yeah. So not exceed three percent. Okay. Well, that's good to know. It sounds like hopefully we won't need to. There you go. <laughs> I knew. Mark knew what he's talking about. So, um, so yeah, we'll be hopefully hiring someone soon to take that spot. We do have someone in house filling in right now, thankfully. Make a point for some of the newer members. I know there was some talk about capital not being addressed again until September. Just a reminder that you actually vote on how much capital yeah. you're putting into the operating for the general fund at the budget meeting. So it will be addressed. Yeah. In it's that. part of the budget. That's correct. It's yeah. a separate line. What I was referring so, to is when we break it out into pieces. That's what we Right, do. but yeah. just saying, like, you just guys so know, could discuss. Yeah. You know, increasing it or decreasing So we, we yeah. formally review our offer, our capital plan in September, yes. but things happen over the course of the year that could cause us to we have to fund it reevaluate. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that, Mike. My my question is like 
things are going to come up over the course of the year. We're going to have to add things, maybe move things, because you can't throw money in there in the middle of the year. Something right. comes up as an yeah. immediate issue, right? So all of these are variables that we're going to want to keep in mind when we are coming up with that number. All right. So two things. One is we will um, decide, apart from whatever the percentage is, we will decide how much capital, how much to fund the capital fund. That's correct. It's typically been six hundred thousand dollars. I know we've had some discussions, and we're going to finalize that yeah. at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we do that the boards don't do is set the um, no rate. And that would be a function of really where we want to see the fund balance, you know, end of year, beginning of year fund balance sitting. Um, so thanks for pointing that out, Kelly. I do have someone who raised their hand, but that's got to wait till public comment, right? On Zoom. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, I just wanted to you say one it. thing. Heather, I did yes. get your email. Thank and you. And I got your response. Nice to meet you today. today. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, so I, I did send, um, Heather did reach out regarding fields in the fields committee, and um, I did respond to her just a couple hours ago, so I apologize. Um, I did want to point out, so tonight a lot of my questions were answered, so I did ask questions. I knew I, I could anticipate questions from the Board of Selectmen, so I want to just get ahead of it and ask the questions to have the answers. Um, I did want to point out that our, um, we do, the town does, just for those who don't know, our town does, out of general government budget, our $5 million budget, we do um, in-kind services and labor and all sorts of things um, from Public Works, about $168,000 a year on the fields and the lawns. Um, in addition to that, we do spend about $3,000 in fertilizer material and $12,500 for a professional landscaper. Um, not to say we don't want to help out in the future, but I just want people to know what the town does give to the schools. And um, Ray, Ray um, Angle, I was about to say Ray Carlson, but he left anyways. Um, Ray Angle um, is a saint, we can all agree. And he's he is, um, he is our town staff. You, you have the Rays mixed up. Oh, I did. I just said Ray I just out of safe, but you're talking about Ray Carlson. I'm talking about Ray Carlson. <laughs> Ray Carlson. They're both same. <laughs> Ray Carlson does spend about 80% of his time probably at the schools, 80 or 85% of his time at the schools, and um, it's a shared service that the town does pay for. So I just wanted to make people aware of that. And um, our public works is probably one of the best in the area. And I think we can all agree when it comes to especially snow plowing. But um, they do put a lot of effort and love and care into the schools. And I realize it's not enough. So, but I just wanted to. And just a, a quick comment, because I think the comment that you just made is directly contrary to what we were told Monday night during the board of ed meeting. That the town I got these hires numbers from Public Works today, because I specifically wanted to give accurate numbers. Right, it's my understanding that the town hires the contractors to do the fertilizing, et cetera, and then bills it back to the board of that. We, um, Public Works gave me the number of 12.5 is what we spend. That might be billed back to the board of ed. He gave me that number from, for a professional landscaper. The, the twin landscaping for the fertilizer, the 2,900, I know we do pay, and the 168,000 we do out of our Public Works budget. So that, right, but that's across the town, right? right? It's for the schools, just the school lawns. I have the breakdown of each school. Yeah. I'm willing to share it. Right, and I, I, well, I was going to say, I'll, yeah. I will respond to your questions yeah. so that we can make sure A lot of them were answered, but sure, I'd appreciate that. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions for the board of selectmen? All right. Todd, you have a point. Uh, be the one we we're going to send questions to by Sunday. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, item 8D Capital Request from the Board of Ed, the moment everybody's been patiently waiting for. It's still evening. Two years ago, the Board of Ed decided put together an ad hoc group, it wasn't a board of ed committee, but an ad hoc group of stakeholders in town because of the concern of the fields. Uh, they've been a concern for years. Uh, I'd like to agree with Ian said about town crew. Anything over the past two years, the town has been doing more in the schools, 
And anything they have done has been better than what's been contracted out in the past. So uh, to that being said, uh, there's been a much improvement for what the town's been doing. And uh, like I alluded to earlier, if you look at baseball fields and the parks, they're in better shape than high school because they are taken care of by two different groups. Uh, so with that said, it's been taken care of. Two years ago, we formed this ad hoc group. And two years ago, the Board of Education, with our five-year plan, knowing that we need to plan ahead of time, uh, put in $50,000 for this year for field improvement and $114,000 for the year 23-24. It just so happened this committee, which worked very diligently, came to us in February. They finally were able to have a plan to begin with just the baseball and softball fields of what they would like to see happen. So the other night when they came to the Board of Ed meeting, I mean, I really told them it wasn't on your agenda, we need a town meeting to go ask for these funds. And then we remembered that Eden has set up a town meeting on March 28th and we have to approve the teacher contract. So because we already have a town meeting set up, the Board of Ed thought the other night, well, maybe we could save another town meeting if we could approve coming and asking the Board of Finance for the 50000 from this year, we could begin the field project. And that's what the Board decided to do. They voted unanimously to move forward, ask for the 50000 and to give a heads up that come July, we would be looking at the other dollars, because again, this is going to be a much bigger project to get the fields in, in the preparation that they need. And like I said, I think we have 114. Uh, proposed for next year. We do understand fully that that's not money we're guaranteed to get. We know you have to approve it. We know it has to go to a town meeting. And that's why we put it in two years ago. But this this committee we formed is really stakeholders from all different groups in town. And they pretty much came to the same consensus that this is a town issue. And as a town, we should be embracing it and doing what we need to do to make our properties look good, be safe to play on, and something that we're all proud of. All these things we heard tonight about the fields have been things we've heard best. Nothing of it's new. So because of the timing and because of the town meeting on March 28th, we then sent the email to you guys asking if we could try to get that 50000 because they would like this done for this season, which makes sense. Otherwise, we're going to go and throw thousands of dollars into making the fields playable. And that's all they're going to be is playable and playable till the next rainstorm comes. Uh, we want to go through. They spent a lot of work. They've gone out and they've raised some money. And the Board of Ed wants to support them because that's an issue. And we look at it as a capital project because it really is a town shared service. We use it for nine weeks. Uh, we have tennis in phys ed. We teach it for nine weeks. We have, a, uh, we have a tennis team. The rest of the year you can drive up there and there are community people there all the time. So that's, that's our request. We're hoping that the Board of Finance uh, could consider honoring that. That's probably the reason why lots of people came tonight, because they felt they spent time with this. They made a proposal to us, and the Board of Education thought it was certainly something we've looked at, certainly something we've heard plenty about, and certainly something that we thought it should be addressed. OK. Thank you. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. We do have two proposals, too, because I know you asked for bids and things. We, we do have two bids on the project. Can we change the town meeting agenda? I don't know. Uh, have you voted on the town meeting? I'm looking at Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> have you published it? I just texted. Uh, yeah, it's in the newspaper. Oh, oh it is? Yeah. Oh. Well, so let's, um, Bob's, Bob's got a, a thought. At town meetings, I thought at town meetings there's an opportunity to add something to the agenda. Can we do that at the agenda? Is it, is it considered a special meeting? No. I think that's a question for the town attorney. Yeah, or our yeah. town clerk. No, it's Christine. Yeah, our, Christine will know. I can ask her tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, let's figure out if we approve it, and then you know, so you can figure out how they yeah, have to. It might be more about the newspaper. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. How many days you have to notify yeah. 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 more than like having a heads up. Five business days mm -hmm. prior to the meeting. That's for a special yeah. meeting, but I don't know about town meeting. <laughs> I guess, first of all, Kelly, can I ask you a question? The only appropriation we've made on behalf of the Board of Ed out of the capital fund had to do with the HVAC. Is that right? Is that, I mean, I'm looking at the Treasury report, but I'm just 
Yeah, so that should be up to date. So, um, yes, that's all we've done since June for anybody. Jeff, and if I could add, there's 50,000 we had in the capital, which we've taken out of our extra money to replace and fix and exterior doors and interior doors at the middle school. So that's 50,000 we're not going to ask for this year. And there's another 10,000 for security cameras that we have in our five-year plan for this year. And again, we've used the grant to pay for that. So that's 60,000 that we're not going to ask you. Uh, okay. You should have put that right on the front of this. So you, yeah. <laughs> you saw me frantically looking for the 50,000. I, I wasn't seeing it. Was like, Everybody oh, wants a nice baseball. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and, and Bob is saying that there's 50,000 that, that for a different purpose you're not going to ask for. Okay. Yeah, but they're asking for... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's, yeah. questions for, for the Board of Ed? So I got a question, Bob. Who, uh, this is going to be a beautiful field. Who's going to maintain it? That's why... I'm, that's a lot of work. That's why I mentioned only the Board of Finance can fix it. We need a long-term... There needs to be a plan. There's no plan. That we need a long-term plan and a funding for it. You're exactly right, Mike. But no, no, no. The reason I'm asking, if we approve this, I mean, everybody wants it, it's going to be done this year? Is that the goal it's, for these guys? They're to ready to begin. Yeah, they're ready to begin work. So we, this year, who's going to maintain it? Do you get, have you had any conversations? Was it the town? There's been a lot of conversations on the watering end. We're looking to put a well in, and we're going to maintain it. You may see me out there with the hose in the morning. I've done that before. But <laughs> and there is a maintenance plan that's part of this. There's 50 now, guys at Fenway. That's why I'm asking. You're, you're so exactly like, right. who's gonna, yeah. That's the biggest issue is the maintenance of Yeah. But you guys have some idea of how you're going to do that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Bob, and there's Bob. also recommendations in the bid for that as well. Bob, yes, sir. Bob, I as I understand it, is, is I saw there is uh, Board of Ed has $185,000 in the non-lapsing fund. Uh, what, what, uh, what consideration had uh, the Board of Ed given to using the non-lapsing fund for use for this project? Missy could answer well, this. Well, I'm, I'm responding from the fiscal end of the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. That fund we put in and we have utilized for emergency maintenance. So to use seventy to 80000 for field, I think would be really challenging for us moving forward, knowing that we have other situations coming up. However, with the 50000 we can certainly make up the difference using the non-lapsing fund. We already planned in our capital plan for 50,000. And like I said, the non-lapsing is 185,000, um, but there are emergency situations that come up and that's why we put it in there. We've only put money in the, the non-lapsing fund for two years, in 2019 and 2020. It sounds like you got the majority of money in your capital plan for this year anyway. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not sure why they can't, would be why you wouldn't want them to spend that. Or well, use it first, you know? and keep the contingency, which is a more flexible fund. Aren't, aren't we using the non-lapsing funds, didn't you say, Bob, for the tennis court maintenance anyways? We, we, we did that one year, and then we okay. put it into our capital. Because again, we've been trying to use the non-lapsing. If you look back at what we've used it for, it has been major unexpected repairs, and to our HVAC system, we're very careful of that. And we feel that we have prepared for this in a five-year plan by putting the dollars there and maintaining the non-lapsing fund for any emergencies that may come up. And certainly thinking about, you know, next year. You know, we're looking at the budget. We, 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 we want to be out a cushion somewhere. Uh, we don't want to be standing on a cliff next year. And uh, this is an item that is important, but we felt we had it covered in our capital plan and to be able to use that emergency money because we, if you look back, that's all we use it for. So without having the knowledge that you do of these two bids, do you have a preference, the cheaper one, or is it is Well, there's there a number of things that have preferences. Was yeah. a rubric was being used to compare the two companies and administration put together, and uh, you know, part of it is the quality of the work, and in the RFP, there are lots of things you know, in an RFP you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You get points for whether you did them, and if you didn't do them, you didn't get points. So yeah, we do have a company that we have a, a choice to choose from. They're all set to go. Well, we just need to know that there's a fund. Well, they're two different figures. That's why I'm asking. We have to approve this. They, they, they provide a... close together, and we certainly weren't going to make a choice until we knew we had approval. 
<laughs> Did the bitters provide confidence levels that this stuff is actually going to work? I see a lot of seed and sod in here, and I know one provided the sod blanket. Do they have? Co I mean, if it snows in two weeks, we might throw 15, 20 grand down the drain, and I don't want to see that particularly happening. Is there a confidence level that they, they gave this? They won't be able to do it. They just won't be able to do the job. They're the blankets that keep the sod warm and keep it protective so they can move up in a couple of weeks. So this might be more of a question for Tiden. Like, is this something we can consider for ARPA, and do we have any ARPA funds left? I did get a request for it, so okay. that's when I I sent I did send Heather questions back. Did you? Okay. So I mean, we don't have. I, I didn't know how much the ask was. Yeah. And we don't have a lot of ARPA funds left. And I did have an ARPA committee, and we did vote on all of our requests. We do have some money left. We voted to keep it as a cushion for emergencies. I mean, this can certainly count as an emergency, count as an emergency <laughs> in my opinion, but it would yeah. have to get voted on by the board. And I just didn't know the amount. So I didn't want to promise oh, anything with that. Okay. So. Yeah, because I mean, I, I think I share similar concerns to Jim, where it's like my initial thought is this is something that I would think would come out of the non-lapsing fund. If that is a challenge and ARPA is a better option, I, I would advocate for that. <coughs> I know, Mike, you're saying it's in the capital it's plan, the and, capital. and you're right, it yeah. is in the capital plan, but what wasn't in the capital plan right. was a new roof. Right. And we've got two and a half million dollars unfunded items in our capital plan. Okay. We need a new roof for the school. Okay. We need fire apparatus okay. to keep the town safe. Okay. Like, we have to prioritize what the capital funds are used for. I think we've got other options to pay for this. And I think it's the non-lapsing funds or ARPA. I don't yeah, think this needs to come out of capital. But I'll, I'll leave it at that. Oh, I'm but, sorry. I mean, I think the non-lapsing is, is pretty thin. It's a little bit less than 1% of their budget. Kind of like their contingency. Yeah. And we're going a year. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're going into a, a, a tough year for them. I personally would not want to put the, the non-lapsing fund towards this. I mean, what I, what I had hoped is that when this became a problem, when we became aware of the school needing a new roof, my initial thoughts were, all right, what we can do come budget season is keep our operating budgets low mm -hmm. and put money into capital. Yep. We knew this was going to be an issue. Yep. We knew the fire department was going to need items, and we wanted to be able to fund things that were already on capital like this. But if we're putting more money into operating, we, we can't double pay. We can't put it into both accounts. I don't think we can we're raise about capital. this year's budget, though. This is capital for this year's budget. Agreed. Yeah. We need to reevaluate and save that money for a later date if we've got a $2 million project coming you know, down. Yeah, the road. I like to keep the buckets clear. You know what I mean? If you're going to be using and we and, and also what you present to the town has to be clear. Yep. You know, so we presented a capital budget for the, for the, the town and the schools last year and it was approved by the town and I think staying within those parameters is part of our charge not to like start right. not or changing it because we want to it's not our job to move that what you asked a valid question he moved operating the cap or was you know yep. I mean it's a very muddy kind of conversation but to take that I think staying within the parameters of money that's already budgeted and we clearly can approve by a town vote is a little different than saying you guys should be using your backup money, which is like their contingency fund. This is a, a contingency item, right? Like this well, is an emergency that they need the money for. Like that is the I perfect think we've use of this for a very long time. I don't think I mean, it's a, a contingency. I, I'm contingency is an unexpected expense, right? This wasn't unexpected. They've been trying. They've been working on this for several years. They 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 have the money in their capital to do it, and to micromanage that from our side of the table. I think starts to, you know, we, we've had a very respectful relationship with them the last few yeah. years, and they've kind of found the money. They're willing to put up some of their money to fit if there's an overage. They're going to, like, figure out a way to maintain it within their budget. So I think when they, somebody puts in that amount of effort to present you a plan, I'm kind of hard-pressed to say no. I, you know what I, I mean? mean? No, I agree, and I, yeah. I completely understand where people are coming from, but we're two and a half million dollars unfunded in our capital plan, primarily because of the roof, 
we need to reevaluate what we're spending our money on from what bucket. We're looking at that over a period, a long period oh, of time. Agreed. I mean, that's not, but we need to start yeah. saving for it now. We have other options to pay for it that are not two and a half million dollars underfunded that I think we should utilize. So going, yeah. Well, I just, I don't, the, the, the way we've laid it out, if, as long as the state approves it, we are in a situation where we've funded it going forward. We have a plan for that going over the next two to three years, okay? We've worked that into our budget already. This is from last year. This has nothing to do with this year. It's yeah. also keeping in mind that we are going to have expenses in future years that we haven't paid for. We, yeah, we, can, make make that, we can make that argument about almost everything that comes before us for capital. You know what I mean? I mean and that's, and perhaps yeah. we should. We need to. We, well, we can't afford everything, right, Mike? Like well, we got to have to make some tough choices. Yeah. I'm saying for this, we have other options to pay for it. Well, I, I'm okay with it. So I get. I mean, we could we could talk about it all. Well, Do we have that ARPA number? How much is left? Sixty-six thousand. That's right. Sixty-six thousand. There we go. <laughs> sounds great. That would be, sounds, sounds great. To be thought. fair, I have gotten requests since our last ARPA that we just haven't voted on, but it would become a priority. It, it would become a vote. I think that's what ARPA was kind of we, meant for, the outdoor activities and... We lost an entire season to COVID to this team. Right, that, ex exactly. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, right. You didn't fund maintenance of the field because of COVID. It's right in your budget. What's yeah. the, what you, I guess I'm missing what the conversation you're proposing to use. I don't even know how much they were you were asking. I, that's what that's well, there's two different about. figures. It's 60, yeah. 60, something. 63,000. Plus the money that was raised, right? So that, that number is 69,000. Right. And I have requests from the police department, too. So, I mean, I, I'm just, I have to be fair as far as. I can't speak for the board of selectmen. Well, would you entertain a motion, and then we can kind of see what the kind of what the discussion elicits? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I make a motion to submit to town meeting a sum not to exceed sixty-three thousand dollars for the baseball and softball field renovations, per the request from the board of education, out of their capital for this year. For the second. Can I just go to 63, not 50? 63. All right, well, I'll second. Discussion? <laughs> I think this is a this is a typical capital expense. It's the typical kind of thing that we have uh, allocated capital expenses for, um, capital funds for, excuse me, and we've known I mean, the Board of Ed knew and predicted a, a cost. It wasn't the, the right cost when they did it, looking out in the future, but it was a cost for all this field work. So they did <coughs> the thing that was on their horizon, and it's um, typical capital, and it's within the, the amount of money they've asked for holistically. I think if ARPA is our best bet to fund this. If not ARPA, then I would say the non-lapsing fund. So we've got too many competing priorities for capital. So those are the two ad two ways I would advocate for paying for it. I'm on with ARPA. I think this is what the funds were specifically made for. You just said they lost the season, right? You guys were all couldn't even play. All you guys, right? Because of COVID. I think it's an ARPA expense. Is it something ESSER funds is? Can they can ESSER funds be used? I know it's your equivalent to uh, our any fund. kind of agreement we can come to. Uh, we, we have two board members here tonight. We can't speak for the board, but right. any type of handshake uh, we would push the board for. Okay. Uh, I mean, I feel the same way about board of selectmen. I can't make them. Right. Because they did have I, shared services. We do use the facilities right. and, and we do feel mm -hmm. responsible. Uh, in a sense of transparency, though, and talking about the capital plan, Mike, I really appreciate your motion. But in transparency, we only asked for 50000 in the capital. And I don't want someone to say we snuck out another. Well, I'm just reading it off of here. Oh. You've got 63000 on this. Right. That's the I mean, I'd be more than happy to amend my motion. Yeah, we're not asking yeah. for more than the fifty because we want to do well, it. Well, the parts that I left out, which I should, with, with unused some uh, some to return to the town uh, okay. well, funds. So. You want to amend it? To yeah, sure. I'll, a friendly amendment. Uh, change it to fifty-two thousand. 
Well, he's only asking for 50. 50? 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Well, I'll take the 60. He's got a capital plan, and I don't want someone to say, you know, we took more. But you said, okay, so $50,000 from the capital fund. Next year, which begins in July. With unused funds to be returned to the general There's another 114 we had in there. We were looking for, there are, there are other fields and other issues. Okay. Um, so that's so the motion. I'll second. That's for baseball and softball, correct? Yes. Here. All right, so we have a motion that's been amended and a second. It's friendly, so I just... Friendly, okay. <laughs> friendly. <laughs> friendly. 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 Let's work Any other discussion? Um, yeah, I just want to mention one other thing that I had. I did have an ARPA committee. I created an ARPA committee, so it wasn't, the pressure just wasn't put on the Board of Selectmen. So it was a bipartisan committee, and we had voted on um, the expenditures. Didn't. It, it decided to keep this cushion as an emergency, right? So I don't know if I need to go back to the ARPA committee or if it's something that the Board of Selectmen can do, but I can figure that out. I just wanted to say that. Is there a policy on the use of ARPA funds? Um, it's Board of Selectmen discretion. Dis discretion, but we had created an ARPA. I created an ARPA. So humor me for a second. We approve it, and she can get the ARPA money. They don't spend it. It gets returned to the town fund, if that's the agreement, the gentleman's agreement. I would be concerned that, that they're going to turn, turn around and say that we will pay for it either way. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I, so I'm still in favor of just using the capital because I think that's clean. You know, I am. Too. I think that's something we voted on last year. We we can't. We shouldn't be changing what we present to the town and then saying, "Oh no, you can't spend it now because." But that's. I mean, that's purpose. how capital works, right? So I, I work in, with capital on a regular basis. Yeah. Five-year plans. This is everything I want to do next year. Next year comes and I go. Well, these things are more important. They weren't even on the list. So you, well, that's you what water line it regularly, right? And you either make it above the water line or you don't. So this could have been in their plan, but the roof takes priority over the field, so then it fell, fell below the water line and the roof gets priority. If there's another opportunity to pay for it, which it sounds like ARPA is, that makes more sense, while, while knowing that we have bigger expenditures coming up. So we've, 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 we planned for the expenditure on the roof within our budget. We didn't, we worked, we worked that into the numbers. It's unfunded. It's not, right, but it's going into, we, with the plan was it goes into next year, which we, we've, we have to deal with next year, if it gets approved. If it doesn't get approved, that's a whole different discussion. I don't know how we're going to, if you guys put additional, I wanted to put additional money into capital, Mike. I've been harping on that for six months. I don't think I can do that anymore, given the amount what we're doing. But it has nothing to do with the money from last year that they're proposing to spend. It has everything to do on what we're going to have to deal with down the road. And we have to prioritize. They still have fifty thousand dollars in their capital fund that they can present something else for. It's only March. They have until the end of the fiscal year. But it would be the same conversation. And we could say no, no, no to everything, <laughs> yeah. but you know, that's not generally the way we kind of give people a budget and let them work within it. And it's not it generally doesn't fall back to the board of finance. You know, we, we give we don't give them a lot to begin with for, for capital. In well, it, must, it must fall back on the Board of Finance or they wouldn't have brought it to us. What's that? It, it must fall on the Board of Finance or they wouldn't have brought it to us. If they could just spend the capital. We, have, we just have to make sure they're not spending on something frivolous. If you guys think that this is frivolous, vote against it. Well, no, I don't think it's think frivolous. Well, I think, well, well, I think we already need it. Yeah. Well, then that's, then, then you're, you know, you have your vote. But I think that this is a priority. I so to that, that to that point, if we approve this capital expenditure, we're not necessarily determining where the funds come, come from. It, that could come from yeah, the yeah, yeah, we're saying we have the other funds. That was the same from capital. From capital. Okay. We're voting to approve from capital. From capital. Yeah. yeah. We don't know yeah. what's going to happen with ARPA, right? We there's an approval process. We don't know that this would be approved or not gotcha. on that avenue or when. So what would be the timeline on finding out if it would be approved? So um, I have a meeting, a board of selectmen meeting on Wednesday. It sounds like Bob, you and I can talk to. Um, I can. I have a special meeting on Tuesday. I mean, I can always make a special meeting if the time is up. Yes. So. I don't think anyone on this board disagrees. It needs to be done, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of what's the, what's the best what's the way funding method for the town. The funding method. And if there's a cushion in ARPA, I think this is tailor made for for an ARPA expenditure. 
and we might still have more right. ARPA. It sounds like it's only 50 and we have 66. I think we still have ARPA funds available for, we still have a, a cushion, albeit smaller, but we still have a, a cushion. We still. can't guarantee well, what the Board of Selectmen right. or the ARPA committee votes on. Right. No. This is the only way we can guarantee that these kids have a field this year. We have a motion in a second. Yeah. I don't see yeah. anybody changing their mind. Let's call a motion. All, right. call a motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No, so we've got uh, three yes, three no, so the motion yeah. fails. Do you have who did? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. Oh, try. Thanks. Hey. All right. See you at the Board of Selectmen meeting. So when All right. Um, is there any public comment? Yes, there is public comment. Okay. Yes, I have public comment. So we've been here many times before on the same exact topic, and it's it's just uh, I can't believe that the Board of Finance cannot put together a capital plan with a priority of what they're spending every year that they present to the voters of East Granby because that's that's the problem. You see here with $600,000 that's in a pot that has no priority, no assignment, no guarantees, and then all of a sudden we get requests for you know things like a softball field. Or a, and I'm not against any of that, but the bottom line is you guys every year have to prioritize what that capital fund is going to. Okay, you can't you can't just sit here and decide at the last minute that we're going to spend this for softball fields and and baseball fields and ignore the two million dollars that we have in HVAC, the five hundred thousand dollars we get on a lawsuit against Jim Hayden and all the other things that go on in the town. Okay without having any plan, which is exactly what you're doing. You have, you have no plan, and you can't explain it to the voters. And this has to go to the voters because it's a capital request. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you that there is ARPA and ESSER funds that can pay for this. There's no need to take this out of our capital budget. And the fact that you voted uh, the easy way out to say that, you know, this is what we're gonna do because we're sure we're going to get it done. Well, you haven't even asked the voters uh, what they think about that because they're the ones that are paying for it, not you folks. So this has to go to a town committee, and I will be there again to, to explain to them once more why you guys need to do planning as to where the funding is for these capital requests because it makes no sense for us to use our capital funds that are in the town budget when we have other sources of funding that are easily available and, and readily available that could be used to pay for this. And it's just a simple thing of eating, doing your homework, getting it done, uh, you know, the BOE and their finance members doing their homework because, you know, they have ESSER funds that could pay for this as well. And they just don't want to do the homework or they have other priorities. And they need to explain that to town folks who are paying for this out of their pockets. So you, you, you baseball and softball folks there, I feel your pain. I see the feels. That's not, I have no angst against any of you guys. This has to do about being smart about how we manage town funds. And we have not been smart about managing town funds in this town. So again, this has to go to a town meeting. If you approve this, even if you approve it tonight on the Board of Finance, it must go to a town vote. And uh, because it's capital funds request. So I'm looking forward to uh, speaking at that town meeting where it's presented along with the BOE contract for you know all the raises and everything else that goes with that, which is going to be another huge increase to our tax base. And so, again, 
You guys are not transparent, you don't do your homework, and you don't explain it well to the voters of East Granby. Thank you. Can I make one other comment? So I appreciate that you all considered it tonight. I think it's truly disappointing that you couldn't come to a funding source. Um, you're on notice. I mean, I'm an attorney. I can tell you right now, you are on notice. You have been told that this field is dangerous to these players. You're going to continue to invite other schools to play on this field. And if something happens to one of these kids or a kid from another school, you're going to have a very large lawsuit on your hands. So I really hope that we can dig deep and we can get this ARPA money and apply it quickly to this problem so that these kids aren't stuck on this awful field for yet another season. And while I don't support everything the gentleman said, I do support planning. And this has been pushed down the road, pushed down the road year after year after year until the kids age out, right? So they're there for four years. The parents and the kids are upset for four years and you know then they leave. I'm not gonna let this go. If this doesn't get approved by ARPA, we're coming back. We're gonna come back to every one of your meetings until you find a source to fund this. These kids deserve better. The town deserves better. We have one 90-foot baseball field in this town, and it is a disgrace. It is an absolute disgrace. And it is a shame that no one could bend on their position to find a way to fund this for these kids. So it is a real, real disappointment. These kids just saw the way our government works is it's a deadlock along party lines, which is a real shame. Other I just want to say one thing. I did hear from Nicole. Um, and uh, we can, because it's board event related, it can go on the town meeting next week. So I don't know if Bob heard, but Bob, you can present at the town meeting because it is board event related. Yeah, I'll go There's nothing to, There's nothing to bring. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing to bring. Yeah. Just yeah. It. If you wanted to speak about it. Uh, I wish I could, but there's nothing. Like, uh, there's nothing for me to speak about if they don't move to the town meeting. I'm out. Of, we're out of line. But I'd like to make a com public comment. I mean, I, I do believe that the town of East Grand has worked on a plan. Um, you have a five-year plan that's been put together by the Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen, Board of Education. Uh, a lot of time has been put into it by lots of individuals in this town who love this town, who work together with each other in this town, and are not toxic to this town. But this plan, we put money in here two years ago in a five-year plan because we figured this committee was going to come forward. We still need a long-term plan. If we have to go make these fields just playable for the season, we're going to be throwing away thousands and thousands of dollars to make them playable, and then halfway through the season, they're a wreck, and we're back to square one, and we're spending more money. Uh, ARPA money, ESSER money, I hear comments about ESSER money. Board of Education, unanimously, Republicans and Democrats believe that having a child psychologist on board after COVID was important, and we're funding that for two years. An individual who spoke has complained about our math scores. We're trying to, we're improving them. We have a math interventionist that we're funding for the next two years. We've spent those dollars in ESSER. We spent them appropriately. The Board of Finance, I've been coming for 40 years. You've done things appropriately. Don't let people tell you you're not doing your homework. You've done a great job. If you look back, I challenge you to look back at any town meeting and look at the votes. Go back and look at the last time there was a teacher contract vote. It was like 170 to 18, the vote, or 175 to 15. It was that much of a difference. So the town of East Granby wants these things. Look around here, how many came tonight. These people will come to the town meeting and vote. And I do believe, and I'm going to look and I would ask you to ask the attorney, is it possible to bring up, I mentioned before, an agenda item? Maybe it could come from the public, because there is a town meeting on March 28th to approve the teacher contract. Uh, and maybe we can do that then. Maybe Christine said up. we can bring up, uh, as, as long as it's board of, board of Ed related, she doesn't think it's a problem. It's not a problem. But again, on transparency and planning, we planned for this. And we thought we would have gotten votes tonight. We came, we have estimates, we have a need. And it was 3-3. Three, three. You know, we, we got to do better, a little better than that. Some things we need. Uh, the ESSER money, look back at how we spent ESSER money. School repairs, school needs, and that's, that's a question that we have. And then it spent the rest of it as on interventionists and school psychologists, which we need and we have for the next two years. 
but we also need to take care of our fields. And that's important, and the money is there. I'm not sure where we go next. Why do we have a five-year plan? We said we're not asking for money this year in a five-year plan, that we've spent other dollars we had to cover that. We did that last year. We are conscientious about it. We have Republicans and Democrats. We've been unanimous on every vote we've done this year. We're a board that's functioning and working together and understand it. We've got the money. How much money is in the capital plan reserve right now that's been collected from tax dollars that has been taken from our wallets already. How much do we have there? Two and a half million? Do we not, know what the not balance is? Not in the uh, We're in a reserve. How much reserve, do we have? Yeah, in, I'm a concerned yeah. taxpayer like everyone else. I've been paying taxes for 40 years. And if there is a reserve in there, what is the reserve? Yeah. If there's a reserve in our account that's been collected from us, we don't need to raise taxes to get these dollars. I believe we have them, and we plan for it in a five-year plan. Yeah, they're already funded. It's already funded. Yeah. We voted last year to fund it. Yeah. What's that? We funded it last year. Yeah, you're right. Where did you fund last year? We funded our budget last year, which had that money in it. Right. But my question is, how much money is in the town in the board finance reserve? We have a reserve of two and a half million. No. That was ten percent. We don't have a, an account called reserve. You're talking about what's yeah, in the capital account? Ending fund balance. Oh, and I, yes, yes. I mean, those are dollars that have been collected already. They're not raising taxes. We have to keep a little yeah. over a million. Okay. And we're asking for 50000 which we have planned for two years ago. Our select, the selectmen, they've been doing a great job with their ARPA funds, and, and they should be able to use that for emergencies. Uh, this is only emergency because it has been taken care of. There's still no long-term plan. So I would hope before you guys are well, I guess you turn it's too late to come up with another motion. I'll sit down. I, I just want to ask one more question, just so I have all my facts. Because I didn't receive the request the Board of Finance did. It's fifty thousand dollars to repair those fields to where you want them at. No, fifty thousand. Fifty thousand is what we had in the capital plan. It comes to about seventy total. And they had raised some money and. Uh, yeah, the 50, we didn't want to come and ask for more, because I do believe in a plan. We do believe as a board to be fiscally responsible, and we're just trying to follow the plan. If we don't follow the plan tonight, I'm not sure why we have a plan. Okay, I'll reach out to my, to my board tomorrow. I appreciate you. Thank meeting. you. Mm -hmm. Any other comment? No. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Okay, we adjourn. All right.